favorite podcast platforms. We're the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey for life and I'm your ride. Hang on. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions Live is brought to you by Energy Power Sports. They're Oakville's full-line BRP dealer with sales and service to all BRP models and so much more. The spring orders are on till March 31st, but with limited inventory, you better get your order in ASAP. Give John Luke a call or visit energypowersports.ca and get, get on the snow for 2023. Also, don't forget to check out their YouTube channel. They're almost to 500 subscribers. Let's put them over that limit. After this show is over, go to youtube.com, search up Energy Power Sports, and click that subscribe button. It's also brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. If you go on to the, uh, the shopping cart, add your studs, backers, and nuts, and uh, put a toolkit in there, use the coupon code SNOW, S-N-O-W, and uh, that toolkit's absolutely free. Fast Track Snowmobile Traction. I've been running it all year, and I love the scratch patterns. We were on some glare ice on the weekend, and it's amazing. No problems on those uh, those corners that are uh, snow covered, but ice underneath grips like a like a cat on claws. There we go. Welcome aboard, Kevin. How you doing, bud? Good. Yourself, Gary? Oh, very well, thank you. Sorry about the the uh, delay in getting started up, everybody. I was having some major technical difficulties. Uh, looks like we got a full house in here already. We got. Uh, we got uh, Pro Polaris Rob. He says, welcome, uh, Robertson's Keith O'Farrell. Uh, he said seven bells. Yeah, we don't. He must be new. We, you know, we never start on that uh, that time. Uh, Mike <laughs> Goulis uh, says, hey, guys, Renegade X. Of course he's in the house. Had a chat with him and uh, Rob on Saturday night after my ride. Uh, Dominator says, evening, gents. Sled 519. I rode with that dude on the weekend. He rocks. Looking forward to this show, Kevin was my only source of what was happening with the spring order delays. Uh, sometime as now is kicking around because I see uh, Gooley saying hi to him, but I didn't see his name. There he is. He's up above there. Uncle Buck and Mrs. Uncle Buck's watching. Uh, who else we got in here? Uh, Troy Parks. He's back in business. Gord McBride. That's a new name I haven't seen before. That's awesome. Anthony Palermo. He's from the Banana Belt. and He's been rocking this winter, putting on a ton of miles. You know, so that's good to see a guy from the warmer climate getting involved. Uh, what else we got here? He says, what's up? Uh, Joe Caraco, 422, he's in the house. Snowstorm's back. Uh, of course he is. Uh, what else? Dave Miller, yep, there's another one. Uh, who else? Uh, oh, it keeps on going on and on. I probably said all these already, but yeah, it's going good. We got a lot of people in there. So we'll get to your questions for uh, Kevin as we get going here, but I want to say welcome aboard, Kevin. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, definitely appreciate this opportunity for sure. No problem. Well, you know what? I I, I I was trying to think about who would be a good guest that you've got players and ski do experience, but I mean, I don't, I don't know how much of a celebrity, you know, you are uh, because uh I mean, all through winter, people waiting on snow checks and stuff. And I was getting links sent to me saying, Robertson's is on. Robertson's is on. You better uh, <laughs> click on it. Let's see what's going on. And it's like, uh, um, you know, it's like you, uh, you don't realize the number of people that you help this winter uh, while they're waiting for their spring orders. Yeah, you know, and um, <clears throat> you and I had, had chatted a little bit and, I guess I really didn't realize the reach that we had, especially up in Canada. But um, what started off is just, you know, I put together a, a quick video back in October, basically just for our customers. And it kind of spread like wildfire and um, definitely pretty cool to see that the reach that it had and be able to help, you know, a lot of people through snow checks and be able to get some good information. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And the, uh, um, like what was the whole decision to do it? I, like I said, in the description, you kind of fed yourself to the lions in my, my mind, 
because I think uh, it would have been an easy situation with all the chip shortages and component shortages. It's just hide under a rock and let let the storm pass, so to speak. What was the decision to actually jump right in and, and face everybody on uh, social media? Well, it's to be honest, it was kind of funny. Um, we hopped on a webcast. It was it was on a Wednesday with Skidoo just talking about, you know, what to expect upcoming. Um, and in the back of my mind, I was like, I'll probably put a video out just for our customers to keep them in the loop. And that Friday afternoon, I was actually stocking um, some of the clothing and apparel that had come in, putting it out on the on the showroom floor. And like three or four customers had come in and said, hey, you know, is there any news regarding snow checks? Are they going to be late? There's all kinds of rumors going around. And then at that point, I was like, you know what? Tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, I'm going to do a video and just put it out there and just try to keep all of our customers in the loop. And um, yeah, here's the thing. Anytime you put yourself out on social media, especially about, you know, something that could be controversial, um, there's always that risk that you're going to get beat up about it. But at the end of the day, I felt that if I just put out good information for people, that it would uh, it would be, you know, accepted pretty well. And uh, I think for the most part, it has. Yeah. What, what kind of feedback are you getting? Like, did, did you do you hear much from from people? Yeah, you know, I mean, I've gotten a bunch of messages, whether it's, you know, on Facebook or through YouTube, um, phone calls even. Um, I've had some people from, you know, north of Toronto call, from the Pacific, Pacific Northwest, um, all over the country really just calling and saying thank you. Um, usually the conversation starts off with, you don't know me, but I know you. I've watched a lot of your stuff and uh, you've really helped me out. And I really just want to take a minute to say thank you and really appreciate everything that you're doing. That's awesome. And that, is that fuels the fire to keep going, does it? Oh, for sure. I mean, after the first video that I did, um, I really wasn't paying attention to the stats too much on it. And a couple of my friends had said, hey, do you realize that, you know, you're at 15,000 views, 20,000 views, and eventually jumped up to almost 30,000. And uh, at that point, it's like, you know, once you start getting that positive feedback, it just makes you want to continue to do, um, continue to do it. Because now you realize that you're probably one of a very maybe few people that are actually putting this information out uh, and people are now turning to you and in, in for information regarding their snow checks. So it definitely keep, kept me going throughout the whole winter for sure. That's awesome. As long as you had fun on it too, you know? Yeah, we, you know, I had fun. I mean, don't, th there was times when it's like, you know, snow check this year was, was very stressful. I mean, snow check any year is, is the most stressful time for us at our dealership. And, uh, you know, just trying to make that time and uh, not get ribbed at home too much from the wife because we're spending too much time at work, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were pretty and, interactive, too, in the chat, Kevin. That was awesome. That, that was uh, cool. You were answering a lot of questions on the fly, too. So, Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, and I don't even know what prompted the thing to do, like, hey, let's just go live and let's just see what happens. I mean, the first time I did it, I never announced it. I was just sitting here in the office one night, and I'm like, I'm just going to go live and just try to answer some questions. And uh, there was quite a bit of, um, you know, uh, people that came in and asked questions. And, you know, I try to do my best to answer them as, as best as I could. Again, I am uh, I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I just have the same information that everybody else has or, you know, my resources. I don't have any type of secret in with any with any manufacturer. Um, so, like I said, I'll try to get you the best information that I can, if, especially if I don't have that answer, I'll get it for you um, if it's out there. Yeah, that's yeah. good because you were just relaying what BRP and Polaris was was telling you, which you weren't making up and you weren't putting yourself in the hot seat. You were just sharing the information. So totally makes yeah. sense. That's yeah. really as simple as it was. That's really what it boiled down to is just taking that information and passing it along to uh, passing it along to the people. Um, yeah, it, it was really, I guess, as simple as it was. I mean, that's. That's all it was. Well, I yep. think that's why it worked. It was so grassroots and and uh, it came. It's so sincere, and you addressed everybody and uh, answered questions, and it it just gave a nice platform for it all. I like this sometimes. Now, Greg, he's a good fan of ours. He said that's all. Most of the people that were waiting for sleds was information, just so they could make a decision on if they could keep the sled coming or buy another sled so they can ride. What did you find? Did you find with your customer base, were, were people jumping ship or were were uh, were they waiting for it? I know you do both. This is unique. And if people don't know Robertson's, they, they are both a Polaris and a Ski-Doo dealer. So he's kind of 
Kevin's actually taken the 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 you know the the heat from both sides. Yeah, you know when it came down to to customers um, deciding what they were going to do, I would have you know a sit down conversation with them and basically say, hey, listen, you know I understand that you're frustrated and you want to have a sled for for a certain trip, um, you know, but if you end up backing out there is a good possibility, you know, that that same sled is going to cost you more money like next year. So let's talk about all the options that are on the table. You know, do we, do we back out? Do we stay with what we have? Um, you know, in let's make the best decision for you uh, as a consumer. So, I mean, we had some people that, that did back out. We had some people that wanted to, you know, find a used sled. I believe it or not, I had one guy that came in and it, we gave him the unfortunate news that his sled was going to be delivered extremely late. Um, talking like, you know, originally it was late February, but now it got pushed to March. He had sold his sled and called the guy back that he sold it to and says, I'll give you a thousand dollars more money if I can buy it back. Cause I want to be on the snow that bad this year. <laughs> oh my crazy God. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's crazy. So, there was some of that stuff, you know, but uh, I would say a majority of the customers, um, they, they held out and, uh, we only have a few snow checks that haven't been delivered yet. Um, but our customers have been phenomenal. Um, you know, like I said, as far as we just giving them the information and trying to help them out as best we can. Yeah. Now, where yeah. are you exactly located, Kevin? We're in Sanford, Maine, which is uh, the Southern part of the state. Um, pretty, cl pretty close to the coast, like York, Wells beach, that kind of, that area there, uh, right on the New Hampshire border, essentially. Right on. So you're in good trail cool. areas. So what's that? You're in a good near some good trail conditions there in Maine, right? Yeah, yeah it's okay where we are. I mean, realistically, um, to get really, really good stuff, we're you know we got to travel three hours, four hours north, and then that's when you start to get in the really good stuff. Right on. Uh, yeah, Snowstorm says he's glad he kept his uh, snow check, and Brad Hitchcock says Kevin helped me find a track for my mock. This year, he didn't even he didn't have one, but told me what dealer did, and even gave me the phone number. You know, Sled Five One Nine says the difference with Kevin is he actually provided the information when he was waiting for his sled. So that's awesome. You know, so what do you think that that uh, I, I don't know if you know the answer or not, but what do you think about people that may be on the fence? Um, you know, dealers have limited how much snow checks they ordered, but. Is there anything that they're doing to, to avoid being in that same boat again last year or that they were in last season? As yeah, far as I mean, shortages go. Yeah, I think, you know, let, let's face it, no manufacturer wants to be in these positions where they're delivering snow checks very, very late. Um, it's not a good look for anybody, right? So, no. you know, everybody was upset. A lot of people are upset with delivery times this year. So, you know, what is the right fix moving forward, like for 2023? What What's going to be the answer? And I think the manufacturers are in a tough position because no matter what they do, somebody is not going to be happy, right? Let's just face it. That's that's the reality of today. But I think that the steps that they have taken, we'll, we'll talk BRP first, is right out of the gate, they limited us dealers to uh, Gen 5 models, how many we could have. They also <laughs> limited... Uh, 900 turbo 900 turbo r models as well and those were very very popular last year um some people may not even realize that us the dealer if i like i ordered a, a mock z for our, ourselves as a demo brp cut any demo that had a 900 you know uh turbo or actually any 900 motor at all they cut them so um this year they limited what you could get for 900 turbo turbo r stuff and then they also limited smart shocks in the 10 and a quarter inch gauge so again people may be a little bit frustrated with that but know that that's just put in place to be able to try to make sure we do the best we can to deliver these sleds on time now as far as polaris goes um dealers this year are allocated certain models so I've seen it online where people are a little bit frustrated because they have to call 15, 20 dealers to find a dealer that's actually allocated the exact model that they want. Mm -hmm. um, again, I get the frustration there, but players is trying to do the best that they can to make sure that they're not in the same position too. So uh, but, and they're also allocating their 7S display this year as well. Yeah. Wow. No, that's yeah, good to know that, that, that they're, they're at least have steps in place to actually, uh, 
um, get people on the snow. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I think they're trying their best because, you know, obviously, like I said, this isn't a position anybody wants to be in. So um, hopefully, you know, we can get our feet back under us here and get back to some sort of a normalcy uh, as far as snow checks goes. I mean, think about how many years it went flawless, right? And this is the first year that it kind of got flipped on its head. Um, so I think customers are a little bit frustrated, but uh, but know that, you know, there's steps being put in place and processes to try to help prevent this. But the one thing that, you know, we have to look at this in a, you know, from a, a wider lens, so to speak, is all it takes is one one thing to completely screw up something, you know, as far as a vendor goes, whether, you know, they have, you know, COVID break through their facility and it just throws everything off. So now you have pick a number, a hundred sleds on the assembly line waiting for a certain component and that component doesn't show up like it was supposed to. Now we have a bunch of downtime. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I heard the players on the 7S display, they're not even offering the Wi-Fi option, which came this year. Kevin, they're completely taking it out. So they're eliminating one chipset for that 7S display. Yeah, I mean, you know, when it comes to those those high-end gauges, um, no different on their side-by-sides. I mean, um, the amount of chips that go into those, you know, those gauges that be able to have all those different, you know, functions, uh, mm -hmm. th there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a great gauge. Yeah, a I lot of our customers like it. Yeah, I can't wait to see the new gate, the new do gauge. I can't wait to ride the new do gauge. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was actually um, hoping to go up to one of the tours um, in New Hampshire, but unfortunately, uh, I got sick and wasn't able to get up there. So I haven't actually been able to see a Gen Five in person yet. Um, just got to look at the pictures online, like like consumers right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have a we have a snow tour happening in Barrie this weekend, but. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm going to go ride instead if there's snow. Well, there is going to be snow. It just depends on how far north you got to drive. Got a trailer <laughs> for it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Got to chase it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's the. That's our life story. How does it work to be a BRP and a Polaris dealer? I mean, we don't have that format up here in Canada that I know of, anyway. Um, what What is it? What's the theory behind offering both and and is it just because you're so remote and and uh, and the only game around that uh, that they let you do that, or is it something that anybody could do it? They just don't. No, I mean it's really it's really something anybody could do in you know especially around here. There's a lot of multi line dealers uh, that that carry you know a little bit of everything. Um, I know some dealers that not too far from us that carry you know all four brands uh, for snowmobiles. So it's not uncommon down here at all. Um, and Basically, you're just trying to, you know, just grow the business and, and have more options for people. You'd be surprised how many people come in and and they have in their the back of their mind that they want a specific model or a specific make. And you actually sit down and start talking to them and you ask a lot of questions and they may not even realize about another model in a different brand that actually suits them better. And, yeah. Uh, Solution selling, right? Exactly. I mean, yeah. you come into the store, Gary, and I say, and, and you're interested in a uh, in a VR1, and you sit on it, and you're like, well, geez, I don't know about that seat. Well, let's hop on this, you know, Renegade Adrenaline over here and see what you think. You know, how do the panels ergonomically, how, do the, how does that fit you? How does it feel? You know, you're able to sit on both under one roof, and that really helps people a lot making their decisions. Yeah, yeah it's nice. They, they don't offer it up here. They don't allow it. None of the dealers up there are the manufacturers. Which yeah, I, don't, I don't know why that would be. I don't, I don't know. So I don't know. It's weird. They they yeah. stopped it. They used to do it way, way, way back, and then they 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 stopped it. But down in the U.S., it seems to be happening still. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very very common down here. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Hey, Liz, we got a lot of uh, fan photos to go through tonight. Do you want to you want to check out some fan photos with us, Kevin? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's let's do that. Just bear with me. I'm just going to queue up the intro and uh, and away we go. Sure. Fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. Check out FastTrack.co. All right, here we are. I uh, I just got to find some notes here uh, for this. 
craziness. And I, I closed them down when I had to restart my system. So just bear with me here. I'm going to open them up if I can find them. There we go. This first one is no pictures, but uh, it's just a, a note. Last week, we had a really good show with the vintage guys. I know we, we were competing with the Polaris launch, so I uh, our viewership was kind of down during the show, but it was great. We, we actually got to meet Kevin, the very first American to ride a Ski-Doo in USA. And he was the first guy to ride, he was the first American to ride a Ski-Doo snowmobile in Canada. Really? <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. And he's a guy, you'll have to go back and get the name because I'm going to screw it up. But uh, he's the guy that actually pretty much made Ski Doo snowmobiles affordable because Ski Doo had the, the original one cent. It was like one like this, you know? Yeah. He actually ordered one down there. And <laughs> when he went to sell it, uh, or they said, can you sell these things? And I, I want to just throw a number out there. And let's say it was a thousand bucks, which was like a million dollars by today's standard. He said, <laughs> right. no one's going to buy them unless we can get the price down. So he he made an offer to ski do that. Can I, because he was with Timberland Equipment and uh, they use Kohler engines in all their equipment. And he said to ski do, can I buy it without this Kohler engine in it? And uh, I'll get the the Kohler engines from my deal, my supplier and uh, and put them in the ski doos and sell them. And they made that deal. And that's, that's what he did. And he got the price down from, I actually want to say it was $1,500 and he got it down to like 700 bucks by doing wow. that. So he was able to create a market and that kind of thing. But, and the funny story is he actually traded the, he actually traded that first snowmobile that, that he had the first one that came to the United States for land really so, yeah yeah so it was it, you gotta go back it was amazing but uh ed ed midge rosebrook he runs a museum down there and uh in um, new england and he said good day gary just dropping a line to thank you sincerely for allowing me the chance to tell our story about how we began here in lancaster new hampshire with the first ski dude to, to the grand prix to the eastern snowmobile racing hall of fame you're the best most humbly edge midge rosebrook so i want to get him back on the show because he he wasn't really sure what the format was um i had another podcaster co-hosting with me and he uh, and he does a lot different than i do so uh, midge says he does want to come back on i want to get him on because he just started telling stories and they're so they're, they're like gold so I, I definitely right. want to see him back on here to to finish what he started. That's for sure. So, That'd be definitely a cool one to check out. Yeah, yeah. Check out last week's podcast. And then I'm on this Thursday night, 9 p.m. Watch my social media channels. I'm going to be on the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers podcast at 9 p.m. Thursday. So, yeah. So, check that out. And everybody send me in your fan photos of your vintage stuff. If you're into vintage snowmobiles, Um Send me in some fan photos because I'm going to share them on that. Uh, I'm going to share them on that podcast. So um, it's a live stream on Facebook. It goes to YouTube, but I think most of his traffic is is backwards to mine. I think he does it mostly on uh, on Facebook. So, but but keep an eye keep an eye out. I'll uh, I'll be announcing it closer to the time. But make sure you send your uh, your photos to fanphoto at mudbrats.com. Uh, of anything vintage you have, any stories you have about vintage, and uh, and let's uh, let's get the snowmobile sessions crew in the chat to rock that joint on uh, on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Mike Gooley's here. He says uh, this is his Cochrane trip. So there's a couple of buddies just hanging out at the trail side there and blocking that. <laughs> but uh, looks like he had well, a good time. The canyon. Yeah. yeah. Looks like he there he is with his truck and loading them up in the back and and there's the there's up at the uh the Abitibi base camp there. Must have been fueling up. And uh look at the snow there. You're not kidding, Rich. Rich is saying that they're gonna be open till April. 
Oh, uh, mid April, yeah. Yeah. You know, went out for dinner with Kenny from the Polar Bear Riders and there he said there's there's tons of snow. They'll be open till well past mid April. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing too, especially for people that got their snow checks late. You know, that's one thing I was hoping for is this season to just go, you know, a little bit later than normal, just so people are able to get out there and use them a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. What do we got here, Rich? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was our 625-kilometer day ride with uh, Ryan. Uh, Steve and I were out. Uh, we headed to put the first sign up north of Hearst. That was a great, great ride. It was awesome. Did you actually do the event, too, or did you just help no, out? No, 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 man. No, no. I helped out, though, uh, at the uh, pavilion there, registering guys, handing out maps and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was good. And I actually uh, helped Clayton uh, from Bergstrom. Yeah, he was right there as on. well too. So yeah, no, it was good. It was a good. It was a great, great week. Awesome week. Met a bunch of great guys and seen a bunch of people do the uh, the four hundred, six hundred, and eight hundred kilometer. It was a good. Yeah. It was good. Good turnout too. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So that was on top of the fire uh, outlook. It, it, it's hard to. Th- I took a bunch more pictures, but it's really high up and tight. Yeah, it looks good. Like eh? you had to. Like you literally had to turn your sled right there and it was like right off the cliff on the other side not too far over a wicked <laughs> view wicked wicked view yeah whereabouts is that um so that was oh what trail was that off of maybe ryan can can t- chime in here he's in the chat yeah I see um that. i'm trying to so remember thanks for your help was. this week rich and he gives yeah, you a yeah, big old okay sign yeah, yeah no yeah. it was good it was good yeah, it was good. Uh, trails are amazing up there. Like I said, there we didn't have one. We had one little section that was a little bumpy, but it was wasn't much because the groomer got stuck in a swamp on Trail C. Yeah, um, heading to Iroquois Falls. But other than that, the trails were amazing. And when we went to put up that sign up in Hearst, uh, we hit the groomer the whole way up. That's when I messaged you, Gary, and sent you those photos when we put yeah, the first sign cool. up. We yeah. followed the groomer. There, no one was on that trail. The groomer went freshly through, so that was awesome. Yeah, it was that's great. very cool. Yeah. Did you get a chance to ride that mock? Uh, no, no, I didn't. No, no, no? but I rode mics. I got to ride mics for, oh, that, yeah, uh, yeah, from yeah. Sled Annex and that's But would yeah. you tell us if you did? Yeah, oh, yeah, no, I did. They're great sleds, man. No, actually, Rich, the 900s are nice. They're, those always they're they're tweaking my, my interest for sure. The 900. Now, Rich, did you get another freaking outfit? Look at this. So, so yeah, so this is awesome. But huge shout out to Ryan at uh Canuck Power Sports where he also reps Chaco. Uh, he said, I want you to try on this onesie. So that's the Chaco onesie, and uh, I wore it. It's an awesome suit. I, I wasn't too sure whether I'd like a onesie, so a huge shout-out to uh, to that. Uh, and I can't remember the model. Ryan's going to have to chime in here. But, uh, yeah, so uh, so I'm going to be wearing that, man. It's nice. It, it's, it was cool. really comfortable, too, man. So huge shout-out to Ryan there, too, from uh, Connect Power Sports for, uh, for letting me have that uh, onesie. That's Chaco. awesome. So, yeah, what, nice. what are we looking at here with the beer? Uh, so that was the setup. So they were they were a sponsor too for the guys when they came back after their rides. So great uh, Great Lakes Brewery IPA helps uh, good beer. Yeah, that was nice. Great. Yeah, that's yeah. out of Cambridge, I think. Yep, yeah, it was yeah. good. Yeah, that's Todd cool. uh, uh, Ryan's uh, buddy there that was helped that helps him with it every year. He's uh, that was his contact there. So awesome. Yeah, that was a good turnout. Great time. I didn't realize it was last weekend. It cr- kind of creeped up on me. Yeah, it was quick. It, it came quick. So. But, yeah, the, uh, the winter, uh, <laughs> Brian says it looks better on Rich. It's a Choco Pilot. It's a Choco <laughs> yeah. Pilot mono suit. Yeah, it's comfortable though, man. It was. I was yeah. really surprised at how how nice it fits. So does yeah. it have a little flap in the back with the buttons that you can? <laughs> yeah, undo yeah, you you could, yeah, so you could, yeah, do a bumper dump on the trail, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Now, does it have suspenders in it? Yes, it does. Yeah, nice. so good question, Gary. It, it may, that's a huge difference, right, for keeping up. Yeah, it's it's well made. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a really good suit. It's the Choco. He's Choco Pilot mono suit. So yeah, and they come in a whole bunch of different colors and that. So yeah, nice, nice. And there's your buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's Steve. Yep. Yeah. 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 He's got the other. Right? He's got an XCR too as well. Yeah. Had it, his sleds running great. So that's yeah. good. It was good. Good fun. And Anthony Palermo, like I said, he, the, the Windsor boy from the Banana Belts, getting a lot of miles down. He says, "Hey, Gary." My dad and I and his buddy went up to Muskoka, and it's almost like riding in Michigan. There's a real trail riding with lots of stuff to see, and I love, I loved it, and I'll definitely go there again. Just don't go on Trail 88 to Huntsville. Laugh out loud, you will have to get new carbides. Uh, there's a few trails uh, when you get closer to Gravenhurst like that too. Um, 
that uh, that are, are are succumb to road riding. So, what can you do? You know. Yeah. I know. And, and then uh, Uncle Bach and Mrs. Uncle Bach. Where are we here? Oh, he nice. says, "Hey, hey, Gary. Here's some pics. The first is our new thermos we carry on our rides with our hot chocolate, and the uh, the, the second one is I'm enjoying the hot chocolate <laughs> on Trail 66 Tall Pine Snowmobile Club at the edge of Algonquin Park. And uh, image three is the uh, the snowmobile shelter, and he's showing off his Richard Hupp signature tech vest. There. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious He's, he said the uh, new signature missing rich hop tech vest and mrs uncle buck's new tech vest there nice. you go that's he's keeping her he's keeping her uh safe out on the trail and then that last Here. one is uh d101b is uh is where they're standing there on that so right on do you, uh do you find many of uh, you guys up in canada riding with tech vests oh yeah yeah, yeah more a lot of them I, I, I like all my friends do. Um, yep. It's uh, I don't know many people that I ride with that don't wear them. Um, yeah, it's true. And, and it's that's funny, thing, Kevin. We were saying that, eh, Gary? Once you get used to wearing them, it's like not putting your seatbelt on when you get in a car. Yeah. Have you, did you watch my YouTube video on that? No. Because no. <laughs> that's exactly what I said in the video about them. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, that's strong. the thing. The uh, when we were leaving on Saturday, uh, Mike Sled 519 goes, I had my tech vest on, but not my jacket because I was putting comms in his helmet. And then he goes, uh, uh, You're wearing your tech vest? I go, Yeah. And he goes, I'll go put mine on. <laughs> <laughs> and I was glad I did because uh, we were doing the, uh, I, I watch a lot of Yellowstone. So I was doing my old uh, six seconds, you know fucking bronco there i was glad i had my tech vest on for that one <laughs> yeah it's true though i agree you never know man no you don't No. <laughs> so yeah. there's a buckhorn creek shelter uncle buck and there's the uh, i don't know if that's the real ice caves or that's another ice cave it doesn't look like the real ice caves well it might be look how small they are down there in the bottom right right by the red line right that's them standing right there Pretty Holy incredible. smokers, eh? Yeah. It's freaking huh. huge. That is wild. Yeah. I didn't get there. I didn't get there again this year either to the Kearney Ice Caves. I boycotted right. them. Started boycotting them a few years ago, and I haven't gone back <laughs> since. Why, why'd you boycott it? What happened there? Is there a story just, there or what? No, no. It's just it was just started <laughs> as a joke. We went, okay. we drove all the way to Kearney and then we had lunch and we just said, We're not going to the ice caves. We're boy- <laughs> That's too touristy. So we didn't go. We drove all the way there and didn't go. That's funny. <laughs> drove hours to get there. Had a good lunch and went, you know what? We're boycotting the ice caves. That's <laughs> and I haven't been back since. Yeah. Yeah. Different ice caves. He says those are the ice caves on Clear Lake. You know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I said, Corey Brock saw them on Saturday and they were great. He said so. The Troy Parks, he's, he hasn't sent many pictures in this year, bad guy. Hey, everyone, big shout out. Everyone got them in before noon today, too. So that's yeah. that's really impressive. So send me your uh, your classic shots by noon Wednesday. How's that? And then that gives me Thursday, Wednesday night and Thursday to put them together. And again, I'm back on the air on Thursday night with the, with the vintage snowmobile lovers. So Troy Parks says, uh, haven't seen – sent in photos for a while he's been busy riding here's a few shots from a hooky day from work end up logging 602.5 kilometers off the gps rode up out of edson alberta and to white court uh, made such a good time that uh, on that trek that we decided to start out on what they call the golden triangle which connects white court to fox creek then to swan hills and then back to white court we ended up completing the entire triangle and returned back to Edson. Covered trail networks of four Alberta Snowmobile Association clubs. Definitely an epic adventure. So here's something for you, Troy Parks. I was actually offered a job as a, as a newspaper publisher back when I was about mm, 26 years old in White Court. Uh, with both publishers, they were the subsidiary of Toronto Sun Publishing that I worked for. 
and they were going to transfer me out there. And their big selling point was it is that there uh, um, is the uh, snowmobile capital of Canada. Where's that, Gary? Whitecourt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I looked it up and it definitely certainly is. But right on. Uh, I didn't go. Yeah, I should. I should have went, but I didn't go. <laughs> look at the look at the the trees there. That's pretty awesome. He's just busting through them, and his nice. map there. That's that's pretty wicked. That's a big day, but I guess if you got powder and you're on a skidoo, that's that's not very. What's he on a Lynx, Gary? Is that a Lynx or what no? Is that? That's a that's a Gen Four. Gen Four. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's hard to see the yeah, yeah the back countries in red look like a Lynx a lot, like yeah. especially yeah, the yeah. graphics on the side. So, yeah. and I think you're going to see more of a similarity in the gen five to links than uh, than ever before right so yeah. rob overholt's an energy power sports customer got his xrs with smarty shocks and uh, he sent us in some pictures and uh, he says uh hey gary uh, these are some pics of my ride saturday and he did 350 kilometers in total he made it up to the ice caves and that was cool great show keep it up so we just made it to Baysville. We didn't get up that far. Did 348 from where we left off. Nice. Um, yeah, so we, we went out of Midhurst, a snow voyagers uh, club there, but they really should have closed all those trails. They're absolute garbage. <laughs> um, they were. They, they should be called. Yeah. Uh, they should be. There's two. They're really, the only trails they have are feeder trails. They don't have any real snowmobile trails. They, they should be called snowmobile ditches because you're doing a lot of road and ditch riding in that area. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, bringing it to trip center car buds. Yeah, for sure. I have Pilot TX skis and they're great. Except now I need to get new car buds because they're worn right off. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were pavement riding, eh? Mostly. Oh, geez, it was it wasn't good at all. Like I said, they should have been closed. They shouldn't have been. They were green on the on the ITG, and yeah. it, they were hard pressed to be yellow. Really, yeah. Yeah. Just it's means they're a, open, right? Kevin, do you dark. get out ride much? I know being in the industry and business, sometimes it's hard. But do you get out riding often, or? Yeah, I try to ride as much as I can. I mean, I'm typically good for two to three trips a year. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, trust me, if I could get out more, I would. Um, but typically, you know, in the month of February, normally under a, you know a normal year, we would be heading out to uh, a show for Skidoo. Uh, going to club and then we'd also be going in, in March to go out to the player show. So that usually cuts them short a little bit. And this year I was only be able to go for two trips. I rode 850 miles this year, um, which isn't crazy, but it's, it's better than nothing. And uh, anytime I get to get out of the store for a little bit, and I, I stay with my father up at his camp and uh, that's when we get to spend the most time together. So um, like, you know, getting up there and getting away for a little while, it's always, uh, it always does us really good. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Oh, That's yeah. good. At least you get out. And I guess, do you, do you usually get a sled for yourself from one of the manufacturers or both of them? And as like a demo that you take out and. Yeah. Um, so I typically, um, I'm going to sign with, uh, with Gary on this one. I'm typically riding a skidoo, <laughs> <laughs> right. but, but I, Whatever I normally in normal years, whenever I get for a skidoo, I typically will get the competitor that Polaris has, you know, um, same similar model. That way there I can ride them and, and be able to give good feedback to the customers, you know, as to uh, which one I like better. And, um, you know, <clears throat> and one of the reasons why people ask me all the time, why are you a skidoo person? And it's not that I don't like Polaris because I like Polaris products and there are things, if I could take the two and morph them together, I would have the perfect snowmobile, if I'm just being honest, you know? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But what Skidoo does great, and, and nobody's going to deny this, is their accessories. They just knock it out of the park. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they for do. sure. The, and the fit and yeah. finish, I think, is a lot better from BRP. But yes. I think it's. I think it comes down to, and I, that's what I tell people, is that you have to sit on them both because they're totally different feeling machines and and i do like the way the polaris feels when you sit on it like to me it just feels more yep. like a more like a bike more like an atv kind of thing um, yep now with my with my renegade i put on the uh, the the uh, 1.8 inch uh risers on the on the forward adjustable riser the extension yep. and uh it's it's night and day difference you know if you didn't have that it would feel too low for me 
but uh, and that's one thing when I rode Nunzio's Polaris last year, I was like, this feels better than the Gen fours I have been on. But yeah. then Corey has the had the Gen four with the with the extension blocks on it, and I went, yeah, that's that makes all the difference in the world. So it sure yeah, does. Sure. Have you yeah. have you had a chance to ride a Lynx yet? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and and yeah. I didn't like the. I felt the handlebars are too low on it. I think the Lynx with forward adjustable riser and to give you that ability to 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 adjust your handlebars while you ride, plus the uh, the riser block would be awesome. So I got one last year, um, middle of the season, and I put summit risers on it. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> it and that made it that made a huge difference, you know, to be able to stand up and ride it. But yep. the ergonomics of the panels on the links and and where that seat doesn't go all the way up to the to the tank or the the filler neck, I should say. Yeah. What a difference if you want to get out and ride that thing aggressively. I I prefer the the panels on the links more than the Gen Four chassis for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, definitely the seat area is, is – you have so much freedom of movement on it. I, I did. I really like that. Notice that right away on the links. Um, I think we're going to see on the Gen 5, the panels are a lot round, more rounded, so you'll have that same visibility from the cab, you know, from the cockpit on it. Um, yep. I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be really a really neat uh, a really neat changeover from, from the Gen 4 for sure. Right. That's Rob's yeah, risers do uh, make XRS. A yeah, that's Rob's XRS in the front there, um, with the flat black hood on it. I love that sled. I love the color combination. Yeah, that's nice. So, are you a stud guy, or uh, what kind of track do you prefer, Kevin? Well, I used to be a stud guy. I'm a stud myself, obviously. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Given no need to no, point that I'm out. Just, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to stud just about everything. And then I started riding crossover sleds. Um, my first backcountry that I rode, uh, geez, that was 2018. So up until then I was always on trail stuff. Uh, 2018, I studded my backcountry. And then, uh, in 2019, I had a backcountry XRS. I didn't stud it at all. Um, it, you know, I guess I'm fortunate enough that if I'm going to be going riding that weekend and the trail conditions are icy, I'll just have the guys throw some studs in it before I go. Uh, yeah. But f fortunately, we usually ride pretty good snow. But um, I hadn't ridden studs the last few years. And this year, um, I was actually on an Expedition Extreme this year. And I ended up putting eye grip studs in it. And um, just good enough to get you across the lakes and some road crossings. But um, I was real happy with those eye grips. Oh, yeah. A friend of mine put those in his Viper Turbo, and he loved them. And I did drive it, and I thought it was great. I think they're better than an ice ripper. Still no no um, substitute for real studs, that's for sure. No, that question comes up a lot, too, in the store. You know, uh, should I stud the sled, or, you know, what do you think about the ice ripper? And my answer is this. There is no, there is no replacement for a conventional stud. Um, it just really all depends, you know, the conditions that you're riding. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it, studs aren't really going to do you much when you're in six to eight inches of powder. They, they just yeah. not, you know. Yeah, that's um, true. And everything has its pros and cons, right? So a conventional stud, it's going to give you, you know, the most amount of traction, but it's going to add weight. You have the, you're going to run the risk of throwing a stud potentially through a heat exchanger. Um, you know, whereas you go with a, either, <clears throat> excuse me, an ice ripper or um, an eye grip stud, it's a lot lighter, not going to give you nearly as much traction. But if you throw one of those out, it's probably not going to go through the heat exchanger. No, no, it's yeah, true. true. Yeah. Actually, I just had a conversation with Anthony Palermo about that. He's looking at a, at upgrading his sled, and he was asking me. I think on an older, on an older track, I wouldn't add studs to it. You know, if you're adding studs to a new track, and then replacing that track, be sure to replace it. You know, five thousand kilometers or five thousand miles or whatever your your your, you know, is in your T kind of thing. And uh, I mean replace that out so you, you don't run the risk of that so um, you know it's funny you say that gary and, and we started noticing on some of the um ripsaw tracks the higher higher mileage tracks that were conventionally studded as that track wears down that stud gets closer and closer to hitting the tunnel and really? we've actually seen some tracks worn down so much you know um on the lugs that when they hit the tunnel protector 
oh, they're going that much deeper. They're going that yeah. much further, and they're starting to hit some of the heat exchangers. I mean, yeah. these are higher mileage, you know, five, 6,000-mile, you know, tracks. But we were looking at it one day. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? And uh, that's what we came up with. I'm like, you know, the, that lug is just worn down. But yeah, yeah, Kevin, I, can you not attest to this too? The skidoo only uses the one ply track. They're a heck of a lot thinner and not as strong as the two ply that's on the Polaris. Are you, is that right? Or yeah, I mean, you could get a you could have got a two ply on the on the Mach Z this year. Yeah. Um, but you know, the other thing is with that one ply track, you use a different type of stud altogether. Yes, you'd have to. Yeah, yeah. You're going to use a you know a bigger headed stud with a bigger backer, mm -hmm. um, just to to help prevent it from you know having pull throughs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you talk to different people, they're going to give you a different opinion. Hey, I like a one-ply track, or I prefer a two-ply track. A lot of it is personal preference, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. But, again, I think it's keeping it, keeping an eye on it and keeping it, you know, make not expecting a, a traditionally stud track to last you for the life of the sled. Uh, you want to make sure that you're – like. I, I think the added benefit of having real studs and swapping that track out before there is any issues – out far outweighs an ice ripper in my mind but i mean yeah. there, there's guys that ride the ice ripper and i think on the gen 4 it's so it's such a good platform that you don't you, you can ride it and you have lots of control and everything like that the only thing i think you lack is stopping power um where on my older renegade i had no cornering ability or anything with that ice ripper it was downright See, scary but the gen it's 4 funny, is not Gary, like that this is my first year running the ice ripper and i love it Mm -hmm. uh, like and I was a stud guy all the way up until this year, and everyone and I was like, I'll, most of my friends were like, "You're either going to hate it or you're going to love it." And yeah. I, I was talking to Corey about it, and my other two buddies with them, I love them. They're a great track, man. I have yeah. got no complaints on them I, so far. So I think it's chassis too. It just makes it a better experience, yeah. right? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and the the Polaris XCR is the same way, right? It's uh, yeah. Now I, again, I don't think you'd have the stopping power but that's easy to test right yeah have you but, ridden any icy conditions rich no but you see this is the thing it's like gary's saying like most of the conditions i'm riding in there's even if you have studs it ain't gonna make a difference because you're in deep snow right so, yeah 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 i on the weekend where i rode you needed studs like it, yeah was, you were sheer ice yeah yeah, yeah. so and low snow what, conditions totally and i haven't ridden in that so i can't comment on that to be, yeah, to be where honest. you have snow covered up on corners and there's ice underneath and Sled 519 actually has an ice ripper, but he studded it. So like I did with my old sled. And yes. uh, he said he was happy that he did that, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't uh, allow enough onto the heat. Tim V has an ice ripper on his 800, and it doesn't throw enough snow onto the heat exchanger. And, I mean, that's the thing. Have scratchers for that because I found that problem with my Renegade. Is, is And I did a video. It's in one of my videos, and I couldn't. I was overheating like crazy. Drew had studs on a 120, no issues with over overheating. He was climbing hills in Kearney, and I was spinning up them like I couldn't. I had to take runs at them because I, I was spinning so much. So, yeah, it's pretty one cool. thing. One thing I'll I'll tell you too, and you guys probably already know this, but maybe some of the uh, people watching don't. If you're out riding and it's you know it's hard packed and you're noticing that temperature start to rise. Go ahead and uh, soften up those torsion springs on the rear skid and get that snow flap dragging right down on the ground to try to catch anything that you can. And uh, that, that may help you so you don't have to stop and put packed snow on the uh, on the tunnel. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. We had to do that with, with Roscoe there a couple of weeks ago because we put in some new torsion springs and it just wasn't letting snow in. He was overheating and cursing and swearing and, <laughs> and it's like, what's going on? So we said, let's just try and crank those down to one and and we got into some powder and it uh it worked out good hey Rick, what is this what is this picture called when they do this you, it's got a name on social media uh, what's that tip to tip tip to tip <laughs> that's it well like that's the thing and they and so sled five one and i well, five one nine and i were were riding at the end of the night he wanted to get a picture so he said uh tip to tip so I went, all right. So he pulled the sled around. I took my pants off, and <laughs> so that's as close as he got. He, I, he pulled, he got off his sled, and I'm there in my underwear. And I said, so what's what's happening now? And he was gone. He left the sled there. It might still be at the Snow Voyagers Clubhouse for all we know. <laughs> yeah, so that's as, that's as best as we got for tip to tip on that one. 
<laughs> so oh, nice, yeah. Yeah. Fun ride though. And then uh, when Bullwinkle's out, all the bras come off there, Kevin. Look at that, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I, I may was, have uh, to come up and ride with you guys. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, like you should see the other side of the picture, all the women standing there topless. <laughs> it's great. How many teeth um, do they have? What's that? How many teeth do they have? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they don't have a full set between all of them. How's that? <laughs> Gary, I noticed there's a hole in Bullwinkle in the front. What did you do? Well, that uh -oh. torsion spring, it was too strong. It smashed the one adjuster. And then the other adjuster it broke through on the front or the, the holder. And it hit down the track and the track locked up. And I went right in the back of Drew. Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. That was a mess. Jeez. It was a mess. A big shout out to Corey Brock for uh, for donating blood to the cause and helping get Roscoe back on the trail that day. But yeah. yeah. And you know what the stupid thing was? I threw the piece of the hood in the uh, in the tunnel bag. <laughs> and you left your tunnel bag open again. <laughs> oh no. Oh man. What Brad scavenger hunt 2022 <laughs> continues. Oh, man. Yeah, so it's gone. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, so well. You'll have to get her fixed yeah, up well, for trade like, or anything. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But that was funny because uh, we, uh, I was actually uh, detoured off the four off of Highway 11 the one time come back from the cottage in the summertime, and it was down the side road. And I remember seeing this fence with the, like all the bras hanging on it, and then here the snowmobile trail runs right along it, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> so I I put my bra on it, and 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 all's good, all's peaceful in the world now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh dominator he says uh what's he say he says hey gary here's a few pics for the fan photos tonight my 2017 renegade somewhere between boulder junction and saner wisconsin so love that running shot. gps too yeah he's got it and he he's got his bag zipped up that's a key with this shot you know <laughs> that is. yeah that was a good lead right into that one it was, wasn't it? I, Kevin, you won't believe it. First ride out, I lost the trail bag that attaches to the rear seat that he's got there. Yep. Whoop. That one. Yep. Totally gone. Gone. <laughs> Off the sled. Nowhere to be seen again. Full of gloves, hats, everything. Jesus. Now, how did you manage that? Don't know. I didn't clip it in, obviously. So. I'll blame Corey for it. That's all. Yeah. No. And then, and then it's like I had, I had my bag zipped up last time, and then we had the the whole issue with Roscoe, and and went back and had to get the part off the trail that we that broke off. And then when I got the part out at the hotel, when Corey was fixing the sled, I just didn't zip the bag up, and away we went. Yeah. And it didn't take long. I lost like an eighty dollar GoPro clamp, and I lost uh, Jesus. a fifty dollar uh, snowmobile tow tow kit that I replaced because I lost a tow kit in the oh, first. Come on, run. so you've lost oh, Jesus, Rich. Gary. It was still in the box. Hey, listen, I, no, I think I'm going to ride behind you. And That's I'm what I was going to say. Like, yeah, oh, man, Sled that sucks, five one nine did. He he was my he rode behind me all day just to pick up pieces, but yeah. He, uh, I, so I uh, I bought I bought another I bought two more toe strap kits and I'm gonna put a sticker on it courtesy of Mudbrat Snow Brats. You're welcome. <laughs> so when it falls out and someone picks it off the trail, they know exactly where it came from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, what a pain. Yeah, Corey, at least I found your granola bar. <laughs> yes, he found my granola bar. So that's good. I, I didn't lose that, right? So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so who right knows? On. Yeah, but that's uh, that's fun. Look at the elite there. I oh, can't believe we were Kevin. just talking about one of those on the weekend. We were talking about those. Yeah, I don't. I can't believe they don't make those anymore. They don't come up with a new version of it, Kevin. Yeah. What's up with that? Uh, it's awesome. called side by side with tracks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they're not legal on the snowmobile trails, so this one would be right up yeah. up your way. They're not. No, no, no. Really? Yeah, yeah they don't allow ATVs on snowmobile trails during the winter. Now, if you go to Quebec, they have their own trail system in the winter. Okay. Time. See, yep. down here, if you put tracks on a snowmobile on a um, side by side or an ATV, you, you just go. register it as a snowmobile and you can go on the trail. Interesting. Yeah. 
Donald Young, Kevin, he says I can buy new bags from Robertson in Sanford, Maine. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> What's Sled 519 says? Oh, he says he did. Uh, did you catch a photo of Gary cowboying his sled? Pope Polaris Rob says. And he says that one time he didn't have the GoPro set up. I told him he wasn't allowed to run his GoPro when he was riding behind me. That's the key. Yeah. We had a we had a riot. We laughed a lot on the. Uh, and I, I converted another Euclear uh, rider there, too. So that was good. But, yeah, those are pretty cool, man. Yeah, we yeah. were talking about those on the weekend. They were cool, man. Yeah. They're, um, you see them pop up for sale every once in a while, but, man, they're a lot of money. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah huge money. Yeah. What was in those anyways? What, what motor's in those in the back? That's got, a, um, that's got one of the first uh, four-stroke um, – Motors that they were running in the uh, like uh, watercraft and jet boats. I think it was a. Uh, I want to say it was either a fifteen oh three or a fifteen thirty uh, okay. inline three cylinder. Yeah. Nice, okay. cool. They sound they sound like a tractor. They really yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do. But they're pretty cool. Good concept. Yeah, they are. Whenever you see one, eh, it's like oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Canuck Power Sports, our buddy Ryan, he says, Rich and Steve rolling with the Canuck Power Sports crew, putting out checkpoint signs for the Great Northern Expedition Charity Endurance Snowmobile event. And he says, uh, we were treated to a beautiful sunrise as riders started lining up for the start of the Great Northern Expedition. Yeah. And then uh, he says, uh, the next picture, he says, he's not sure if anyone recognizes this handsome fella, but he was pretty happy waiting for his millionaire club sandwich to arrive. And oh Rich, my god and rich is in the photo too <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord that's a that, great oh, shot worst place to ever eat man it was really? disgusting oh and you know what the sad thing is 20 years ago the couple that owned it was amazing place and now this anyways we won't get into it but oh <laughs> we were asking for the special and he's like uh Oh, it's the Million Dollar Club, uh, but there's no chicken, no turkey. Frozen beef patty is substitute. We're like, what? What? That's <laughs> Oh, it was just, yeah. we, we all left there not feeling too well, let me tell you. Oh, no. <laughs> and I had a grilled cheese sandwich because I'm like, you can't mess up a grilled cheese sandwich. Well, oh, you can yeah. yeah. Is that what Ryan's look on his face is? is <laughs> He's like, patty? what did he just say to us? Yeah. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it was bad. That was bad. <laughs> It was so, bad. Greg says, who are those two characters? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. He, Ryan seems like he'd be a hoot to ride with. Oh, he's funny, man. Great yeah. time. It was a good time. Good week. Good week. Had a great week. That's cool. Went fast, man. So. Oh, I bet, too. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, unfortunate the yeah. sled wasn't running good. <laughs> fast Track Canada Traction Products. That's awesome. Yeah. It's perfect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Hey, there we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's in Snoth, Snoth Rock. He must mean Smooth Rock. Mike Buddha says, smooth is that rock, where it yeah. was, that restaurant? Yeah, Smooth Rock, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. Oh, wow. oh man. It's bringing back memories that. Ugh. Yeah. I heard, Sometimes now says he heard they only made 500 of those elites. Is that true? He's, I'm not sure about that. They were limited builds. Didn't, I thought they made them for a few years, but maybe that's all they made over the few years. I, I don't know. You see a lot of them still. Like we were at yeah. the when in Kirkland Lake, we're at that uh, Canadian BRP deal or whatever. It's a great Canadian, and and uh, they had uh, they had one up there on the on the display. They have a whole bunch of vintage sleds and stuff. So, yeah. oh, he Ghoulies is trying to type again. He says Smoth now. It was <laughs> Snoth Rock, and now it's Smoth Rock. <laughs> Yeah. So we'll give we'll give Ghoulies another shot at it, and <laughs> third one's a charm. He'll probably get it. Have you seen yeah. his fingers though? No wonder he can't type smooth. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, no, that's cool. Yeah, we're gonna get into Kevin's pictures now. Um, and don't forget, if anyone's got any questions for Kevin, fire them up in the chat there, and uh, and you know he's good with answering stuff. So, where you go? So. Yeah, absolutely. I do my best for sure. Yeah. Nice. What, what's a lot in Canadian for LML? <laughs> anyway, I don't know what that conversation is, but that's Greg being Greg. That's for sure. So what are we looking at here? 
Uh, so this was, uh, geez, I can't even remember what, just the last year, the year before, um, district dealer uh, of the year for c and k and You know, I got to tell you, you know, we have one heck of a crew, you know, at the store and, and none of it would be possible with, without all of them, you know, from the sales part, service, our office people, um, you know, it's, we have one heck of a team and uh, we don't do it for the plaques, but uh, when you get recognized, you know, from the companies, it's, it's definitely a pretty cool deal. Um, you know, and the other thing too, I got to give a shout out to our reps from BRP, Jamie and Dan. Uh, throughout these these times, they've always been there for me. I pick up the phone if I have any questions or any type of advice. You know, that they're willing to give it to me. So, um, great group of people, all the people at the shop, and then uh, our reps as well. Nice, right on. That's awesome. And, yeah, the team it means everything, right? <clears throat> yeah, you know, one thing that I try to strive on when you know when is all about building a team that. You know, when you go to work every day, it's um, you enjoy the people that you're with. I mean, we call it our second family because think about how much time you spend with these people. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's even more time with them than actually at home with your family. So try to always build a really, really, really good team and everybody gets along, enjoys what they're doing. And, uh, you know, that's that's exactly what we have and, and beyond fortunate to have the team that we have. Oh, yeah. Cool. How many, like, are you the only gig in town or is there dealers nearby? Like what, what, what kind of, uh, what's your market look like out there? No, there's, there's plenty of dealers around us. Um, you know, not very far away. I mean, there's a dealer right down the street from us, probably two miles. They just sell obviously different brands and we do. Um, but no, there's, there's quite a few dealers pretty close in and around us. Uh, BRP spreads their dealers out a little bit more than Polaris does. Um, yeah, but you know, like I said, there's, there's plenty of, plenty of dealerships around. These, uh, these XCs are pretty awesome, aren't they? Yeah. You know, this year we started doing some pretty cool builds with side-by-sides and, uh, started sharing them on our YouTube channel. And, you know, it, it really gives people an idea of what they can do with their machine and the accessories and trying to pick stuff out of the book or, or online on the website is, is really, really hard. So. Uh, we just decided we're going to start doing some builds and so many people come in and they're like, you know what? I like exactly how that is. I'm just going to take that, you know, um, yeah. or people will get an idea for their own machine too. And uh, it's really worked out well. We've done some pretty cool builds. Uh, we have some really, um, you know, big builds coming up too that uh, we're really, really looking forward to doing. <laughs> I love his name, Olive Garden Gnome. <laughs> yeah. He says, Kevin, any idea when the desk post chips will be at dealers for installation? That's a good question. Uh, desk post stuff, I believe, is is available for us to order right now. Um, I think, I'll, you know, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but for us, the dealer, we're going to be putting that stuff in the off season and then next preseason um, and get all those taken care of. Now, that's what I heard is that even with the with the smart shock chips, it's it's up to the dealer to actually order that unit. Like BRP, even though you've sold the sled, they don't ship you. Hey, you had 30 sleds go out with smart shocks. They don't send 30 of those units to the dealer, the modules. You have to actually go, hey, I need I need these 30 pieces yeah. if you have the customers for it, right? You're right there. And, and what was really confusing about all of this, and, and I personally made this mistake, was that how BRP views it, it's only a delayed component if the machine cannot function because it's missing. And if that's the case, they're going to auto ship those parts to the dealer. So whether it's an ECU that's missing or the actual shocks that are missing, um, anything that, you know, like I said, the machine is going to rely on in order to run, that's considered a, a delayed component and they'll auto ship that stuff to you. Anything that, you know, like a smart shock module or a desk post, that stuff there isn't auto shipped. And I, and I found out the hard way. I was like, where are these smart shock modules? And then doing some digging, I realized that I had to go in and order them myself. So oh, you know, wow. you're spot on with that. And the thing is, it, some customers will probably say, well, how come you didn't know that? And I'm just going to be upfront and honest with everybody. 
there is so much information coming into the dealer right now regarding all of this stuff. And yeah, uh, it's a lot of documents to read. I can just imagine oh, daily. You're, and it's it, probably a ton of pages. Like it's not just a little blurb. It's probably pages and pages. No, in, in, <clears throat> you're right, Rich. In, in, there's only so much information somebody can consume and then retain. For and sure. that's one of the downfalls with being a multi-line dealer because it's not just I have to be dialed in with BRP. I got to be dialed in with Polaris too. And then we also mm -hmm. sell Suzuki and, and Kimco. So um, it's, there's a lot of information coming in and, and I do my best to stay on top of it. And there are times that stuff uh, slips through the cracks. I'm, I'm human, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. Like, yeah. You're, yeah. No, that's no, good. That's, that's cool. good to know though. So that's, you know, there you go. Yeah. Brad so. says, if you get any Defender Limiteds in stock, uh, I don't as of right now. I do have some stuff on order, um, but it is uh, already pre-sold. So I'm hoping I can get some more uh, defenders. Defenders have been very, very tough to get up in the Northeast uh, as of late. So um, I'm ho we're hoping our allocations start to to jump up here a little bit. Keep in mind, they had a, I don't know if you guys were aware, they had a massive fire down in there at the warehouse in Mexico. Yeah, early that was a few year. months ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that, that put us behind the eight ball quite a bit with side-by-sides, but we're hoping to start getting more and more defenders here pretty soon. That's cool. Do you have any with black and black and fire sale de deals on right now? <laughs> smoke, that slide tight the smoke. The deal. <laughs> those, are already, those are already spoken for. Yeah, yeah that's bet, awesome. Right? This is cool looking too. Yeah, another XRC. I mean, uh, power flip windshield on this, put a set of 32-inch carnivores. That is a wicked looking yeah, unit. That's love wild. That windshield. So you just push a button and it flips up like that. Yeah, <laughs> there's um, there's just a button right on the uh, right on the dash, and you can stop that in any position that you want. That's yeah. cool. So, yeah, it's it's one touch. It'll go all the way open. One touch, all the way close, or you can stop it anywhere in between. Like that's it. There, that looks it, great. Nice venting, it, right? Exactly. Which the thing is, it's nice because now, you know, in the wintertime or in the cooler months, you can keep that closed. But in the summertime, if you're in a lot of dust, you can just crack it just a little bit or anywhere in between. So awesome uh, accessory. Again, BRP does a hell of a job. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, they, they, they're winning the game on accessories. No problem at all. How many off brands do you see with link accessories on it? It's loud. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All kinds. All yeah. kinds. Look at this that. machine right here. This is That's my a favorite. beast. And she's lifted too. Yeah. So that there is a Defender uh, Defender Cab Limited. So full climate control, EAC. Um, we put a set of 30s on this, wheels and tires, <laughs> um, heavy duty springs, Fisher V plow on it. I mean, tinted the windows, audio system. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> headache rack, bed extender, light bars. I mean, I, you know, I built this machine on paper probably three or four months before we actually got it, ordered all the accessories for it. <laughs> right on. And to see it all come together, man, like this by far to date was probably my favorite build. Did you sell it, Kevin? Did you, did yeah. someone buy it? Right yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. So that machine there, um, that was about a $43,000 build. Jeez. Well, I'll bet you the guy who bought it's happier than a pig and you know what? Yeah. Oh, he loved it. He loved it. coming home with that. Oh, I can plow the driveway. I can do anything with it. That's yeah. awesome. Fieldsy you know, Nine says, "Did did he did that building have a cat logo on it?" No. No. There you go. Yeah. No. Kind of, Ryan says it's nicer than most of our trucks. LOL. Yeah, I'd like those <laughs> wheels on my truck. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, the nice thing with that plow setup is um, it's just like on your truck. It's all electric over hydraulic. You're not using the winch. You know. uh Really, nice. really nice setup. Nice. Yeah, that it looks great. Wicked. That is cool. This guy right here. <laughs> so this this is Gary Robertson. This is the, the founder of Robertson's Power and Sports. Cool. Okay. Yeah. You know, I um he he's provided me, you know, an opportunity that, you know. The average guy like myself would never be able to have so awesome that's good that's yeah, cool to hear that's good so is that a brother or who is that no gary's not related to me at all um i just i started working for gary back in 2004 and uh i actually i, I was young back then and chasing money i decided to leave in 2007 because 
I had it all figured out how I was, was going to make money, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, my world kind of fell apart for a little bit. And then I went back to work for him. Went back to work for him in 2010. He gave me a second chance, and uh, I was able to buy into the business in 2019. So right that's on. awesome. Love hearing yeah, stories cool. like that. Pretty cool stuff. You know, I, I started when I had started there, I was basically sweeping the floor, um, mm-hmm. you know, doing some some minor uh, wrenching on some stuff. And, uh, you know, he saw something in me and, you know, definitely, like I said, provided me an opportunity that I never would have had, you know, so I owe, I owe a lot to him. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Good, good story. <clears throat> that's a great shot. This is on your, nice. uh, on your uh, Facebook as well. I almost use that as a thumbnail because it's so, and I was going to put your cutout right in the corner like this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was a, I, I love that shot. We yeah, get, we get unbelievable sunsets up there at the store, you know, Wow, man. And, uh, everybody comments on it. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many cars will just stop, pull over in the parking lot and they're taking pictures. I mean, you know, if I nice. charged for people to take pictures, I probably could be retired by now. Yeah. <laughs> how much snow do you get right there like do you get a lot of snow too um again all depends on the year you know but um we'll get storms you know that are a foot plus and the problem that we seem to get in southern maine is you'll get an awesome storm but you know a day or two later it warms up and rains yeah yeah it sounds like here you know so it's kind of all over the place yeah oh yeah no, I love that but are you show. similar to around our city there, Kevin, where you you can ride our drive trailer two to four or six hours north and you're into wicked snow? Yeah. Yes. Yep, yeah, exactly. So yeah. They're only exactly. a few hours from Quebec, Rich. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. So you, you do you do ride Quebec, don't you? Like quite a bit, right? Me? Yeah. I had never ridden Canada. Oh no. Oh no, hey. Oh no. Wow. Yeah. Nope, I've never ridden Canada. Um, one of my my bucket list and my father's bucket list is to do the uh, the Gaspe Peninsula at some point. Oh, nice! Um, yeah. Really, really looking forward to doing that. You know, if I can break away from the store for a little bit, that's cool. Yeah. So, is this your expedition here that we're looking? That at? was my expedition extreme this year. Wicked. Wicked. That's neat. Yeah, fully decked out. I mean, <laughs> I, have you guys had a chance to ride one of these things? No. Yeah, my, my buddy that I rolled with a couple of years ago, Tony had one. They're, they're pretty wild. It's like a moving couch. It, it is, you know, and it does so many things really, really well. It's a Swiss army knife. In my yep. opinion, it's snowmobiles for sure. And, uh, you know, I remember I, I rode this in 2020 when they first came out in the gen four chassis and a couple of my buddies were like, what are you doing with this thing? Like, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> and, um, I, I let everybody ride it, you know, and they're like, you know, on the trails, this is, this thing shouldn't handle the way it is. Look at exactly. it. Exactly. And yep. it doesn't ride the way it looks, believe it or not. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wondered about that wide track, how that would. Uh, and it goes. How it, yeah. How, how that would handle <laughs> in the trails. Because you see them, you know. Yeah. It's, so it's, one, of the, one of the things, Gary, is if you ever get a chance to ride one of these things, they have an articulating rear suspension, which I'm sure you're aware of that. Yeah. At, yeah. At, yeah. at the very yeah. back. So. Yep. What I do when I'm trail riding it is I lock that rear track in the up position. It has the same effect as like a, a tipped rail. Mm-hmm. Oh, so now nice. you don't have as much now you don't have as much track on the ground pushing you through the turn. Oh, so your right. footprint's the same as what a renegade would be, probably, right? Pretty when similar. You put that back up. That's cool. Yeah, similar. It's yeah. you know, it's funny when we were riding in Quebec three years ago and my one buddy on a six hundred swapped off with Tony. And we're all, and we're hauling the mail pretty good. And he goes whipping by on this thing, like to the <laughs> bar. And it was hilarious. And he's leaning back, looking at it, and he goes blowing by us all. And he said, it's like a couch, you know, it's, it's super comfortable. And like I said, the thing goes like snot. Yeah. yeah and goes- Angela says lots of people, Angela D welcome aboard, buddy. Lots of people have those in Quebec and they fly with them. I'm surprised oh, yeah, how sure. well they handle. Yeah, and he's then, right. Brad Hitchcock says, Kevin, have you ever been to the ghost trains? I have been to the ghost trains, and I'm going to give you a little tease here. My video guy is actually putting together a backwoods trip that we did to the ghost trains, and I'm hoping that's going to be out this week. Nice. Is that the pictures we have? Like, Is there pictures in there? Is that the ones? Yes. Yes. Oh, you got there some are good some. Pictures. Yeah, we got oh, some right good on. pictures coming up. I like the aircraft one, too. Not, not the spoiler alert, but 
you've got some real neat stuff. I love seeing stuff like that. Look at the side view. Look at the oh, winch God. on that thing, man. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. L- luckily, I didn't need to use the winch this year. No. Yeah. Now, is it is it attached there, or do you unclip it and put it on the front rack when you need it? Is that how it works? So that's just in its storage position. Um, on this sled here, I've got an inch and a quarter receiver on the front bumper, and then also an inch and a quarter receiver on the back. So you can put this in the front or the back, and then underneath where you can see that fuel caddy there is where all the controls are for the winch, and the, you'll just run the plug out to wherever you put the winch front can, and rear and you can operate it. You can live off that sucker. Oh, so yeah, sure. the way that's sitting right now, uh, Kevin, what is that What is that worth? Like you got the bars, the lights. Yeah. That, that, that box that, on the back, by the way, you could hide a body in it. It's hey, I'll, I'll tell you, everybody this year was laughing at me about this box, and, and this no. sled got the nickname The Box because they ride <laughs> behind me and they just see this thing bouncing around all over the place. <laughs> But I'll tell you something, uh, for doing all my video stuff, I was wearing an open face helmet because I had the GoPro mount in it. Yeah. And um, it started to snow really, really bad. And, and wearing an open face helmet, as you know, I mean, it, it could be a pain in the butt when it starts yeah. to snow or any type of precipitation. I kept my oxygen helmet in this thing <laughs> and just swapped out and I was good. Um, Can you imagine the amount of shit Gary would lose out of that if he had? That I was box? just going to say oh that we are going to step. We are will step up the the mud brats <laughs> treasure scavenger hunt, hunt next year. Oh my god! Angelo but, D says that box is so sealed. He spoke to a guy, the one that went through the ice, and the box kept the sled afloat in the water. Oh yeah! Wow, it does have a really really good seal on the inside of it. Uh, I never had any any snow dust in there. Um, yeah. But, Rich, to answer your question, that sled there, um, full retail on everything to build it the whole nine year, twenty three, twenty four thousand. Not bad. That's not Seriously. too bad. No, not at all. What's, that? Yeah. What's sitting up on top of the box? What are those two things up there? Those are oil caddies. Oh, okay. You got Holy two. Smokes. It's a four stroke, though. You don't need that. No, got... that's a two stroke. Oh, is it really? Okay. Yeah. It looks like a four stroke. Yeah. No, that's an 850. Yep. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, there you go. You need all that oil for all the weight. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you so, all hey, that shit. Creepers. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, – I use those for fuel, not, yeah. not I oil. No, you got vodka in one and you got rum in the <laughs> other one. But I'll tell you something. When you use the the fuel caddy, I you guys have fuel caddies or no? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I use oh, yeah. I don't. I use it for other people's sleds. Using <laughs> ah, actually this year more mine. But yeah. So you know how the the nozzle's a little bit of a pain in the butt, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you open up the oil caddy, the nozzle is a lot bigger diameter for flowing oil. Yeah. Ah. So you can flow your fuel a lot faster. Oh, ah. Nice. But I didn't tell idea. you to put fuel on that, by the way, either. No, no, no you no, didn't. No, 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 no. <laughs> not at all. But they look that's cool hilarious. up there. That, that's amazing. That's yeah. great. Fun sled. Yeah, that's awesome. Is this your pooch here? That's, that's my pop right there. Pictures of that. That's cool. Where's that? Yeah, that's rock, actually rock cut. That's up on uh, Moosehead Lake. Um, a lot of the pictures you're going to see are up in that area because that's where I, my father has his house up there, his camp, and. That's where I frequent a lot. And um, so that's on Moosehead Lake uh, formation. It's called Kineo Mountain. Um, yeah. th- those cliffs there, uh, they're pretty steep, and it's straight down another 200 feet down in the water. Yeah, nice. nice. Yeah, we got we have some in, um, uh, I can't remember the campground, though, near Peterborough that has that. And it's like 300 feet up. It goes 300 feet down in the water as well. Yeah. Oh, actually, Corey Brock made a point. That's U.S. dollars on that, so 23 grand. Just as a comparison, what's a Mach Z worth in your in your neck of the woods? Um, you know, uh, a Mach Z, depending on how you get it, your your retail is like nineteen six seven, right in that range. So if you put some accessories on it, I mean, you you're know, there. you're not the you're there at twenty three thousand dollar range. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're there. Okay, so close up here, twenty seven or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's good to know. Bon Echo is it? Ryan says, yeah, Bon Echo is a huge rock yeah. face. Thanks a lot, Ryan. That's great. So Ryan swapped out his nozzle for a regular one in his fuel caddy. Yeah. There you go. Yep. I've never had to use my fuel caddies. It's difficult to pour. With when I drove my six hundreds, I never used it on my sl- my own sled. It was always other people that would I'd actually let them use it. They'd fill up their sled. They'd go to a gas station, <clears throat> refill my can for me, and away I go. Yeah. So, oh, at least they did that for you. 
Yeah, yeah. So, and I always made sure I run like eighty four in it, and then I get them to put the. Money <laughs> That's so, it. Eh? But the uh, and it all skunky fuel from the summer. It's all the stuff I pull out of the boat in the spring. Leaving that kit. But uh, this year I've had to use it more. And you know what? I bought is one of those electric pumps. Um, so when I'm at my trailer, I can just stick the electric pump in it. And those it pumps, are amazing, eh? Yeah, it those pumps, are cool. Yeah, a full twenty five liter jerry can. So what is that five gallon yep jerry can uh it'll actually be 20 seconds slower with the electric pump than pouring it by hand but you don't with filling my boat you don't have to lift it up over your head and you know it's got a little handle that stuff works amazing those things are awesome they're cool i seen one of those this year steve had one and i'm like what the hell is that he's like oh it's electric pump you just dump it in and just hold the nozzle and it fills it up you don't even have to stand around eh? it just sits there and it's like yeah it's got an automatic shut off yeah yeah no, they're Sweet. wicked. It's awesome. That's so, awesome. so, uh, Kevin, this machine you've got here, uh, you have to watch my my podcast from last week because we actually have a video of one of these running. The guy restored. Nice. Oh, really? Yeah, it's they're it's super cool. All plywood, right? That's all wood, Rich. Wicked. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually up at the uh, the yeah, museum. museum. Yeah. 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 That's my wife and I up there. Nice. Yeah, and it's. The heater, it has a heater in it that draws warm. So the engine's in the very back there. Yeah. And, and is it a, I can't remember what's in it for an engine. I want to say it's a diesel, but it isn't. Um, it's a it's a uh, four-cylinder GMC um, mm-hmm. car engine. And cool. it, has a, it has a channel underneath. And it just, when you open up the vents in the cab, it just draws the warm air from the engine through and heats up the, the cab. Right on. Yeah, that thing is yeah. wicked. Yeah, love those things, wild. man. Yeah. yeah. So those used sure. to be always whipping around out in Jasper and Banff way back in the seventies and eighties. You remember that? I remember going yeah. there as a family as a little kid, and those things were whipping around, touring people around. They still oh, use cool. them there. They still. Yeah. Use oh, they them still the, do, eh? The okay, cool. Yeah. There was a guy commented um, right on last week. Yeah. That brings so, up memories from my yeah. childhood. That's cool. Yeah. Moto Guli says that's a beast. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. Right on. Ryan says use group use group used our caddies four to five times this past week. <laughs> yeah. Someone's clearing a lot here. Yeah. So a few years ago, my wife and I purchased some land where we're gonna eventually build our future home. And nice. this is where <laughs> some people say, What do you do in your off time? And um, I'm down there on Sundays working clearing the land and having a blast, get some equipment old five ton uh, military truck with a dump body on it. And uh, that's, that's where I go to kind of, you know, relax and get away from everything. Believe it or not, working, working in the woods. Nice. Right on. That's good though. That's cool. Actually back to that last picture. Gooley says it's an inline six and he's exactly right. That's what I was. See, he, he was watching last week and paying attention. There you go. And Ryan's Ryan from Canuck power sports says they use him for cat skiing because it's cheaper than a helis- helicopter. <laughs> Good huh. yeah. That's Where cool. did you get that military truck? Do you own that? Yeah. I, I do, yeah. Um, Jesus. A, a local guy had it, and um, where I need to bring a lot of my stumps out in the back of my lot, it gets pretty wet, and uh, that's actually all-wheel drive. Um, wow. So something like that enables me to get out back there. Ten-wheel nice. drive. Yeah, it's a blast. It, it it's not fast, but I mean, no. it's uh, it's, it's a, a torque horse. monster. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It really yeah, that's is. That's awesome. That's wicked. Wow, what a view! Where's this? Beautiful. So that picture of um, that you saw of my dog in the boat there, this yeah. is actually up on the fire tower on top of Kineo, um, looking back uh, towards. You can see that little river there in between the ridge. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my father's camp is actually off of that river. Um, nice. It's just beautiful country up there. That is beautiful. That's really nice. Tilly too, eh? Pretty mountainous. Look at that. Yes. Wow. Nice. These are some good trail riding shots. What what mountain's that? Is that in Maine? That is in Maine. That's Mount Katahdin. Oh, cool. wow. Yeah, What's that's it? Maine's that's Maine's highest point right there. Um this, What's the elevation up there? Would you say, Kevin? You know, ah, uh, geez, you had to ask. I, I want to say it's it's either five or five or six thousand. That's pretty good in, in that range. Um, 
this trail here, I mean, if you get a nice clear day, you run this trail in this direction and you just have beautiful shots of that mountain all the way. And uh, one of my favorite rides. Nice. Oh, what a beautiful view. I mean, you got the mountain back there. You got the river. Like, yeah, wow. that's nice. There's actually some camps like where I took the photo from. And these guys get a million dollar view. That's beautiful. A couple of nice revs, Rev XP and a nice Rev XS there. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yeah, that was uh, that was my demo. That was a 2016. Yeah, the one in the front. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. That's sweet. Yep. That nice. MXZ is a sport, though, right? So was it the same year as well? Uh, no, that one there was a buddies. That was a little bit older. MXZ Sport 600 carb. Um, what a blast of a sled to ride, though. I mean, they're just so light. You can flick them around. Um, you know, top speed wasn't the greatest, but a lot of fun in the tight twisties. Yeah, yeah. Some oldies. Nice. Yeah. What, are you, what are we looking at here? <clears throat> this here is a – I bought this sled. It was a 70, 73 Olympic 340. Um, right a couple of buddies and myself, we they, – like, hey, well, let's go buy some vintage sleds. And <laughs> I ended up finding, I ended up finding this thing. It was really, really good shape. As here, you can probably see some more of the uh, pictures of it. You can tell it was in really, really good shape. And oh yeah, yeah. After riding it for 15 minutes, I freaking blew the cogs out of the track, and <laughs> so wreck, wreck, the track got destroyed. And I ended up having to find a new track. And at the time, I couldn't find a track anywhere for it. Finally, I did threw a new track on it. And, now it's you a conversation see, piece. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about that sled. Back in 2015 is, is when I had it. We had really, really good snow, and I rode the hell out of it all, all locally. And a um, guy came in the store one day. He was like, hey, you know, I'm looking for a Renegade XRS, eight, you know, 800 at the time. And uh, I says, you know, I don't have a Renegade XRS available, but I got a 73 Olympic. <laughs> And he kind of looks at me and he goes, no, you don't. I said, yeah, I do. I said, come on back in the shop. Let's go upstairs. I'll, I'll show you. So he says, he goes up, he looks at it. He goes, this thing yours? I said, yeah, it is. He said, you want to sell it? I said, sure, I'll sell it to you. No problem. So he came in looking for an XRS and left with a 73 Olympic. That's hilarious. That's awesome. That's hilarious. Good, good, good upgrade. That's it, sure. eh? Yeah, right? Yeah. My, uh, my 69 Nordic, it wasn't running when I got it because it was just, it was a kind of barn find. But the uh, the guy got it running, and as soon as the track started spinning, it was blowing plastic of the front cogs <laughs> out. So I had to go to Royal. And that's saying parts are parts are available on that stuff. So I went to Royal and bought the the new drivers for the front, and away we go. But yeah, same yeah. thing. As soon as those those drives go with the bogies, they'll tear everything apart if you don't. Yeah. Have oh to God, stay yeah. On it. Yeah. yeah. Look at you with your young beard there. <laughs> yeah into it yet. <laughs> yeah no uh that's that's me and my wife we were riding and uh i finally got her on a sled she hadn't been on a sled for quite a while and i got her on a uh enduro 900 turbo and uh <clears throat> i didn't tell her at first but i put the uh, learning key, program the learning key to it kept it in <laughs> eco mode so it wouldn't get away from her <laughs> oh that's smart yeah that's awesome you know but uh oh she that's my better half for sure she uh she keeps me in check. That's good. <laughs> Another good view there. Nice. Yeah, this is uh, this is me, and my father, on top of uh, Saddleback Mountain. Um, happened to discover this one day. You know, some of the best trips, guys, is when you when you leave in the morning and you're like, "Where are we going to go today?" Nobody knows. Let's just we'll just ride and, and yeah. see where it takes us, right? And uh, that was this discovering this mountain was one of those days. And I took my father there and my father's ridden a lot of these areas and I very rarely could bring him someplace he's never been before. And, um, this was one of them and just the awesome view. You can see Katahdin uh, <clears throat> from up here too. And, uh, just, just an awesome view. Right on. Yeah. I love those little hidden gems, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Are these the ghost trains? Nice. These are the ghost trains right here. So, um, that was this year. You can see I got two Expedition Extremes there, um, a Renegade uh, XRS 850 with Smart Shocks, and then uh, my father's Enduro there on the end. We I seen, you know what? It's funny. I seen a documentary where a guy, I think he was a photographer, he went by these trains. 
this they're very very popular um yeah. so i don't know if you know the backstory of them but i was just um, gonna ask yeah they, back in the early 1900s uh, at the turn of the century, they logging was is a huge yeah, part of Maine's history. Yep. Okay, and they had a tramway that would that would uh, haul the logs from. This is in between two lakes, and they would use the tramway to haul the, get the logs from one lake to the other. And then shortly after that, this was way more efficient. They would actually put all the logs. You know, there was a thir thirteen miles of track, and they would put the logs in these cars, drive out to the lake, and then the track was actually tipped. Uh, along with the, the box cars, the floor was raised up eight, 10 inches on one side. So when they got to the lake, it would all the logs would automatically dump out. Nice. Nice. So they use these trains to for logging, and they only use them a short period of time, four, I think maybe four years. Don't quote me on that. But mm -hmm. uh, they, log, they logged so many, uh, got so much out of there so quickly, and it just wasn't cost effective to, to bring them back out, so they left them there. <laughs> That's all. Wow. So the tracks are all gone and everything now, right? Well, no, the tracks are still there. Um, it, it's a lot easier to see, obviously, in the summertime with, with no snow. But in front of the um, where the sleds are, that, that train right there, there's tracks right in front of that leading into the woods. And if you go on um, YouTube and just type in ghost trains, there's people that did videos on it um, in the summertime. And I just saw one the other day where the kid followed these tracks all the way out to where the old trussle used to be. And you could see the tracks going in the water. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. That's a very that popular out. destination. Yeah. yeah. Neat. Oh, I love seeing stuff like that over there. Is this the, the engine bay of that, uh, that 72? It is. It is. Look yeah, how clean sweet. that thing was. Well, yeah. I, I, when Mint. you sent me in that in, I was looking at the exhaust. They're Don't rotted out. Like no, nope. you, you can't find them. Yeah, that thing's like brand new. Yeah, that was a that was a fun sled. It hasn't even it hasn't even seen much runtime with no. a Y pipe on it. It's mint, right? So this photo here, this was this past uh, right after I think it was right after Labor Day weekend. Um, we're a C2 switch dealer. I don't know if you've heard of, of the C2 switch, the pontoon boat. Yes, yeah, yes. Cool. I definitely want to get my Arson one this summer. And yeah. I know uh, God so has one. We got yeah, we had the opportunity to go up to Lake George, New York, and uh and try them out. So that's myself. Um to my left is my father. To my right is Derek, our sales guy, and then on the end is Tristan. He's uh he does all our videography, puts our, puts all my mess together, makes me look halfway decent. Nice. <laughs> right on. You're gonna, so you're, you're you gonna chance. The, yeah, what do you think of the switch? Ah, uh, the switch is a fun machine. It really is. I mean, you know, when we first saw it with handlebars, we thought, yeah, it's kind of funky, but you know, a guy like yourself that's used to being behind, you know, handlebars, you're gonna hop on that thing, it's gonna be like second nature. Um yeah. They're a lot of fun, man. They spin on a dime. Remember That'd they had awesome. the they had the jet boat version of that way back, about 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, it's the stopped. same thing. It's yeah. it's very similar, you know. Um, they stopped making jet boats in two thousand twelve, uh, and they hadn't had anything since. But these these pontoon boats, I think, are a game changer. Well, the key the key that I like about it is it's got all the link accessories. Plus, you can you can drop all the seats out of it like quick. You yeah, know, like it's it just it's so versatile. I just love the the whole concept is uh, is crazy, and the price point wasn't nuts. Like we had a guy up north, and he bought some what not off. I won't say off brand, but it was a you know it wasn't a G three or a, a high end brand of, of boat, but it's a good quality pontoon. But it's a little fifteen or sixteen foot. It's not huge, and. Uh, he was only four grand out what the MSRP was on the, on the switch. So the, yeah, that's, you know, and you get here, the PRP and you get like 180 horses or something base. And, you know, well, so. well, that's the thing. Like if you take and you were to buy a competitive pontoon <laughs> boat, same size, same horsepower, um, that conventional pontoon, let's call it, is going to be more money than that switch is. Um, oh, for sure. With a 45 on it, you know? Yeah. I mean, so for myself this year, I, I kept one for myself to be able to to go out and enjoy a little bit. I've got a twenty one footer with a with a two hundred and thirty horsepower motor in it. Um, I got it 
all decked out with a bunch of accessories. Um, you know, and I think the boat's like 50 grand, but you know, you can't, you can't get a regular pontoon boat for that kind of money with that motor in it and, and all the accessories that I put on. Yeah, you, that's, not even that's, right. that's yeah. right. What do they have? What do they have on them when you get the upgraded version like that? For, um, for a so plant? they've got, they've got the base switch, which <laughs> again, that's just base. They have a cruise model, which is going to have, you know, a bimini top on it. <laughs> it's going to have um, more seating in it. Um, they've got the Garmin, um, you know, uh, GPS on it. And then they have a, a sport model that has like padded flooring and like two lounge chairs in the front. Uh, those are a little bit more set up for doing like water sports, you know, tubing and, and skiing and that kind of stuff. That's sweet. Oh, they'd be great to, to ski and wakeboard behind. Be oh, awesome. For sure. Oh, for sure. So this picture right here is the same mountain that I just, that me and my father were on. This is just looking the other side, and that's Katahdin behind me. Right that's on. sweet. Yeah. And you say you only get out a few times a year. Yeah, typically. Typically, yeah. you know, it's um, it's tough, but, you know, I make the best of it whenever I can get up there and just try to disconnect for a little while. Yeah. yeah that's good. <clears throat> Was this on. your wedding? I've seen a few photos that you sent into this. I thought they were pretty cool. Yeah, this this was my wedding here. Um, uh, my best man and myself actually built this truck together back in 2012, 2013. Um, hands down, probably the best day of my life right there. Well, that's cool. Is that a 32? That's actually, that's a 37 uh, pickup. Um, and I sent you another picture. I don't know if you saw it or not, but what it was when I when I bought it, um, that, that, green, that green truck there. Yeah. It, it's coming up. It, it'll it'll come yeah. up. Oh shoot! We're gonna have to get back to that now. Where are you going? There we go. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, that's a thirty-seven. Like I said, me and my buddy built that truck and uh, had a lot of fun with it. Um, it was part of the wedding, and unfortunately, in order to uh, to buy into the dealership, I had to sell it. But um, well worth and my it. wife was not my wife was not happy i can tell you that right now <laughs> oh man do you, it was it local that you sold it so you still see it around or no no and the guy he's out in new york that bought it from me um and he's changed it up quite a bit and you know it's almost one of those things where i prefer to not see it because then i'd really miss it even more you know oh yeah for sure that's right you, you'd uh, you'd regret it every time you see it probably there's a pooch again yeah, that's out on Moosehead Lake, and she loves going out there on the boat and, and just relaxing. And that's my best friend. Uh -huh, right on. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. That is so cool. this this is a cool place. This is called Katahdin Ironworks. In that mountain that you just saw me on, that had the back view there of Katahdin. This is right down right down the road from it, essentially, and. Um, Katahdin Ironworks, that was an old iron ore. Um, they would they would mine the ore, and then they would uh, basically put it in these furnaces and melt it down. And uh, this was back, I want to even say in the 1800s. I think I sent you one of the pictures of the write-ups of, right of this place. And this is one of the old uh, furnaces that are that's still standing. That is cool. That's wicked. It's neat how you can walk in there and explore it, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff up in the main woods, you know, that you would never expect to be there. Yeah, for sure. Look at that with the little beard again. there, too. Holy cow, yep. you can almost see chin. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. Rich's beard. Yeah, no, yeah, I, it, I had to trim mine a couple of months ago. It was getting too too long there, man. But <laughs> I keep saying every every fall, I'm like, I'm going to grow one like that. And then I just, it's like, I just can't, but. I could do it, but it's just, yeah. you know, you know, what's funny that you say that is, is I do the same thing. And my wife always gives me a hard time about it. And I yeah. said, you know what, this year I'm doing it yeah. and I'm not, I'm not cutting it until not, we start building our new cave. house. And you know what, Kev, if I left mine alone, mine would have looked like that. It's just like, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Actually, Rich, I don't know. Can you see the top of my hat on this picture? I can't see it, but Rich would be happy with this, with this one. Oh, no, yeah. I, I, it wasn't in the, it wasn't in the uh, picture. Okay. Oh, it's a player's hat. You know, I had to. <laughs> you want to wrap them every now and then, right? 
Throw yeah. some love. <laughs> so this picture here, a lot of people don't know that uh, Gary Robertson, we talked about him a little bit earlier, the founder of uh, Robertson's Power and Sports. Yeah. He was a big time um, oval racer. Nice. Uh, back back in the back in the day there he actually was factory sponsored from skidoo wow yeah Very something cool. you know he he was extremely extremely good at what he did and he doesn't really talk about a whole heck of a lot and i remember one day going down in the shop down in the basement and i, I no exaggerations just trophies as far as you can see and i'm like why don't you ever display this stuff and he's just yeah. like it's just not him. He wasn't that guy to really boast or brag, but he's a modest fellow. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. He, he was the man. Right on. That's all. I just, I'm reading here. You won't be able to see it on the screen. Uh, when did you first start riding? He says, I started riding as a kid. My first sled was exact same as my first sled. <laughs> and I, do you know what his sled was? A little trick oh, for Kevin here. Yeah. Yeah. It was an Articat. No, it wasn't. 72 huh? Moto Ski Capri. Oh, he was eight, eight years old. Then he had the Panther. He had the 71 Panther. And then he you went to a funny, You want to know a funny story about this Panther and why I said cat is he actually just found one in, online somewhere for sale. And he's like, I have to go get this sled because yeah. that was my one of my first snowmobiles. And yeah. I, mean, I think it was maybe it was one that his father bought him. And he's like, nice. I got to go get it. Did he get it? Yeah. Uh, he's bought it. It just hasn't made its way back here. I think it's in Ohio or something. So okay, we're just right waiting on. to get it back. Nice. Then, right he on. A, then he had an 81 TXL. We showed a lot of TXLs last week. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All the best Ooh. riders started on 72 Capris, the pleasure craft. <laughs> yeah. They did. <clears throat> Motor ski Capri. Yeah. I don't make this yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Someone this here one's in the wedged in there good. <laughs> <laughs> this was a little bit of carnage. Um, it's funny. So on top of Kineo, there's a there's a hiking trail to get up to Kineo on that fire tower that we had that really good view of the, the ridge earlier. Um, I've been trying to make it to Kineo on snowmobile, up, make it up to the fire tower now for quite a few years, and it just never seems to happen. There's just one area that's kind of a pain in the ass, it's like an ice luge. People run it all up, and just it's tough to make it up through there. <laughs> ice luge. So we were trying to make it up. We didn't make it up, and of course, my myself and my my friend that who was driving this assault, you know, we're not in the greatest shape. We joke around, and say round is a shape. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is. So you know, we got to get these things turned around, and we're just ex exhausted, and we're riding down the down the the mountain here a little bit. And out of nowhere, he takes a dead left. I, 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 we're going slow. I'm like, what are you doing? I run into the side of him, and we got this mess. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that's hilarious. And that's with your oh, expedition, yeah. isn't it? That's the expedition sitting behind there, is it not? No, that was no? Uh, that was my back country. Oh, was it? It's a big one, yeah. too. 2018. Yeah. yeah, I think it was the 2018. See, yeah. Uncle Buck had a 72 Capri. He knows this, what's up. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I told you all the best riders started on the 72 Capri. He has had a 297 on it. I think mine was a 299 or something and with no compression release and no recoil. I, I, got, <laughs> I got some good pictures of it. I'm showing them Thursday night. Yeah. There's another good view. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Nope, that's good time miles. again. This is down towards the uh, Millinocket area in Maine. Uh, that's back in 2020. That was my first Expedition Extreme, actually, that I rode um, with a couple of really good buddies, my buddy Tim and my buddy Kevin there. Uh, awesome view, as always. We, For whatever reason, we always seem to find these these pretty cool views. That's what nice. I did. Called an Airwolf with J-Lo Rockwell in her. Nice. <laughs> that's what Uncle Buck called his, his, uh, his 72 Capri. Yeah. <laughs> My my buddy had a he bought an X O P P sled. It was a it was a I don't know what year it was, but it was a six forty Nordic, and it was loaded. Like my sixty nine Nordic had uh, had uh, cigarette lighter and stuff on it, but he had gauges, cigarette lighter, had reverse, and the reverse it would go as fast in reverse as it would go in forward. 
Really? It's so funny because he'd do 40 miles an hour in reverse, like just give her. <laughs> and, just, and the skis were tipped up at the back, like for reverse. But yeah, it was a, it was a wicked sled. And it was all black because it was a police edition, right? Oh. Huh. Pretty neat. I don't know where that thing is today, but I, I'll, I'll bet dollars to donuts it's still running. Probably. Yeah. So this is your lot here, your, your, your uh, dream of what you're going to build there? Yeah, pretty much. Me and my wife, you know, um, like so we've been doing, I've been doing work down here the last three summers pretty much straight. Every Sunday I'm down there working and uh, hopefully uh, we'll start building here in the near future. Fingers right crossed. On. Nice. Yeah. Anyone order a Gen 5? Sorry, a little late. Yep. This guy. Corey's got one <laughs> on order too. Yeah. No, I can't wait. It'll be, it's going to be good. Is that your wife's sled there? Yeah, yeah, that was nice. my wife on, on nice. her Enduro. I don't know if you could probably see, but if you look closely, you may be able to see that green learning key on there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. She, is she yeah. past that now? Uh, you know, she hasn't ridden really much since uh, since that year. The The next year I said to her, I said, do you want to, ride, you want to try riding two up? You know, see, how it, uh, see what you think. And, uh, boy, that was a mistake. I won't do that again. Yeah, no, two up riding is not something that anybody should do um, if they want to get their wives involved in snowmobiling because it's not fun for the person on the no, back she, unless they're unless they're mentally prepared for it, right? That's the key. She, she's always kind of ridden her own, you know, but she she was a trooper. She said, "Hey, let's give it a try," and uh, no, that ain't going to happen again. Yeah, <laughs> and look at she's got two bags on there, Rich. So she unzips those. There's a great scavenger hunt to be. <laughs> Yes. No, she probably makes sure they're done up, buddy. Oh, yeah. You're probably not. You're probably going to find toilet paper in there. Yeah. I used to have that in mine. Yeah. 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 It's in Kirkland Lake, though, somewhere still in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, how are those 900 turbos? Are they pretty forgiving off the bottom? Like, I know they're pretty snarly when you when the turbo kicks in. But uh, yeah. are, they, are they fairly forgiving for, for someone that's learning like that? That's one thing that I really like about the 900 motor in general, whether, whatever platform, it, you know, whether it's a turbo or not, but um, by putting it in eco mode and um, putting a learning key on it, I mean, I think this thing does like 48 miles an hour, you yeah. know, so. Mm -hmm. That's decent. You, you literally could just grab a handful of throttle and it's just going to slowly accelerate. Um, so Anybody, like, my wife had ridden in a while, and people said, you're crazy, putting on our sled with 150 horsepower. I mean, you know, is your life insurance paid up? I said, yeah, <laughs> it's fine. You know, but um, people can grow with the snowmobile. You don't have to buy multiple snowmobiles now. You put the learning key on there, you get them comfortable with it, and then slowly you progress up through the roads and back to a regular key, and, and yeah, you're good to good go. So. Yeah. I did the same thing with my kids with my sea -Dews back in the day. It was yeah. smart. They were great, man. So if they mashed it and you know got scared, it would it wouldn't do anything stupid, right? So yeah. exactly, yeah. It, same same thing on these things. Yeah. A lot of Trace says he's in Kirkland Lake or she. I think I seen you guys. I'm a big fan. Well, thank you. Actually, if you go into a couple of gas stations, see if they got my bag in there because they. Uh, <laughs> someone said they heard that somebody put one in a drop one off at a gas station, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. It's a trail seat bag and it's full of good stuff. So if you if yeah. you get it, you can you can have a pair of gloves as, as long as I get my bag back. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's important. My my other bag is a story why I keep on leaving unzipped is you know they get the little clip on the back. Yeah, the little strap clip. Well, that's my ticket when I zip it up. I clip it. Well, that thing broke off earlier this year, so there's no way there, you don't have that that steps of service kind of thing that second step the to show that you've really zipped it up. So that you should bring it to your local dealer and have a warranty and new one. Oh, it's oh, too old to warranty. It's way too old. Yeah. Well, I'm sure energy would take care of it if, if I Luke. needed to, but yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I've got a lady that does a lot of my, 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 uh, my sewing and stuff for my tents and, and flags and things like that. So I was just going to give it to her and, and get her to fix it. But that strap is gone with Bullwinkle's hood piece. Um, so oh, I, yeah. I'm going to have to get a clip for it. I'm going to have to get one or three print ones. So that's another <laughs> story. Good shot. Nice wrap there too with the star on it. 
Yeah, so this year, um, this was my backcountry that I rode last year, Backcountry XRS, and this is um, Baxter State Park looking at Katahdin. So Mount Katahdin is within Baxter State Park, and you can ride um, one perimeter trail. They don't groom it. Uh, there's a speed limit in there, but if you can get there early season before you get a lot of snow in there, uh, you get some awesome views. I, I've actually had friends go through there, and you can watch guys like uh, ice climb. Um some of the mountains that's just just sheer ice so it's a it's a cool uh cool spot to check out if you've ever done it that's cool you can see how big that mountain is straight behind you too hopefully you can see that in the clouds that's pretty impressive yeah it's it's beautiful wow still have the price tags on the skis there i see too that's great yeah that's probably one of my first trips out yeah see this is why i thought you rode quebec but you were just there in the summer i guess yeah, my wife said to me, "Hey, listen, I got to go to Canada because I got to. I'm after something. She was, she had this uh, collection that she was working on, and we had to go to Canada to go shopping. So I said, listen, if we're going to go to Canada to go shopping, we're going to stop and, and we're going to do some stuff that I want to do too, you know. And uh, so that's how we ended up up here. Did you get some good Canadian beer too? You know, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a beer drinker. You know, I'm with Rich, Rich tonight. You know, we're, we're putting back the waters pretty heavily here. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nothing wrong with that. No, you know, I, I'm messed up enough as it is without alcohol, so. <laughs> yeah, good yeah. good point. Can you imagine doing a snow check update video just completely sideways? Oh, you don't, <laughs> you, you don't, What's wrong you with you people? You complain too much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't get Penny Hastings from Newfoundland on there when you do your oh uh, lord <laughs> when when she screeches you in to do the the update videos oh, it'd be boy. a different uh, different story. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at here. Is it looking down a well or up a well? No, you're actually um, that Katad Nine works at Iron Ore. Um, uh, you're looking up that you're looking up through it. Nice, yeah, yeah, pretty cool shot. That is really good. There's the beast again. Yeah, that's uh, that's down on my land there, the backhoe and, and the military truck doing all the work. Is that a diesel in that truck or is it a gasser? No, that's diesel. Yeah, nice. There's a nice little cabin. Yeah, so that's actually, uh, that's my father's place up in, in Rockwood, Maine. Nice. Um, that's where I ride out of, like I said, I get to spend the most time with my father up there and uh, we have a blast. We, whenever when all of us get together, it's, uh, we, like I said, we have a really, really good time. That's actually back in 2018. I was on my back country there. And uh, yeah, that was probably right before we went sideways into each other. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yeah. There's your buddy in the salt. <laughs> that, that's yeah. him right there. Yeah. yeah. That's my buddy. Um, we call him Ahmed. Ahmed. Nice. Ahmed. Yeah. <laughs> David Molden wants to know if uh, the ITCs have come in. Ah, uh, geez, Dave, that name sounds familiar. I think he's messaged me a few times on uh, on our Facebook page. Um, some stuff has been showing up um, slowly. Um, I think we just got most of the last of our ITCs uh, this this past week. So, um, hopefully, Dave, yours is is not far behind. Uh, at your dealer. Nice. What is the ITC? ITC is the intelligent throttle control. So a lot of these sleds are getting shipped without the throttles on them. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that actually. Yeah. Well, what should I do if I get your bag and what does it look like? It's the trail. Um, it's the trail seat bag uh, from Skidoo. If you look it up, uh, it goes right on the seat. If you get the bag, then message me on uh, Instagram. Mud Brats, Snow Brats on Instagram, or come back here on YouTube the next week. We're on Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You just put it in the chat. I'll make <laughs> sure I get a hold of you. I think it's long gone, though. I think it's, uh, I think somebody found it and it was a real treasure. So I, I don't think I'll ever see it again. But I did hear, I did check the gas station in Kirk Lake and it wasn't there, but you can check again. It's black with the link uh, logo on it. And, uh, you can check there again at the ESO, I think it is, right in town. But it might be one of the ones on the outskirts of town that they did it. So, yeah. But uh, I appreciate that if you guys do some 
espionage for me because I missed that bag. It's something I would I didn't replace this year, but uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll wait and see what um, uh, I found a seat bag in Ontario that's for sale. Um, <laughs> I uh, I uh, didn't replace it, but I, I maybe they'll change it for the Gen Five. Maybe they won't. I mean, the tunnel, the rear tunnel is the same, so it's probably the same. So, oh, this is your Ironworks uh, placard that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured I'd just, uh, show that to you so you could kind of read and see what uh, see what that was all about. Yeah, that's neat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's so neat. between 1843 and 1890. There yeah, that's nice. Yeah, well, that's cool. There's a go. I love that snow, man. The blizzard oh, snow yeah. you're standing in. Great. Yeah, that day there, you know, we got on the lake and it's about a seven and a half mile ride up the lake and we could see the storm coming down from the from the top of the lake. It's like man, big, big snowflakes. And that was a that was a fun trip. That's actually me and my buddy Ahmed. Oh, nice. <laughs> His real name's Josh, but that's what I call him, and very rarely do I call him by his real name. So we'll be in the, at a restaurant, and I'll be, hey, Ahmed, you know, and people start looking around like they think they're going to see a terrorist or something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, beautiful shot here. This isn't snow. We don't show this stuff. That's my driveway. Oh, oh that's nice. nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice That's place. leading down to where I'm clearing, and um, – Nice, love it. Now, how far away is that for to your to your uh, uh, dealership? Yeah, uh, six miles. Oh, jeez, man, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I can be nice and close, you know. And yeah, yeah, that's great. This I love this. This is uh, quite the story behind this one. Yeah. So um, this is a B fifty two crash site in um, in Greenville or Elephant Mountain. Um, and if you get a chance to check out the story, um, there was actually survivors from this, believe it or not. And no way. some of them crawled out of the woods um, and, and really, really, this happened in the wintertime when it crashed. So a uh, really, really um, cool story behind it. You can snowmobile to this. I've snowmobiled to it. And I've also uh, hiked it. And obviously you can see more um, in the summertime because it's not covered in snow, but unbelievable, like to to go there and see the uh, debris field and how far it's scattered, you know? Oh, and they said that the guy, the one survivor, I think there was only two survivors. And the one guy yeah, is the only cute. guy to ever survive an ejection seat where the parachute didn't open. Right. No way. He landed upright in the snow. No yep. way. What year was this in? Oh, boy. I don't know right off the top of my head. I think Gary's looking it up. Yeah, no, no I, I'll. Uh, it's a, it's on the plaque. We're gonna get to that. It's on. Oh, okay, the, okay, cool. He's got a poster coming up for it. But interesting. It, what what was the land? Was it a was it a, a mine or something? They stopped all operations, when, and now it's preserved as a as a monument, kind of historic preservation yeah, it, in this area. Yeah, this is on Elephant Mountain in Greenville, and you know I. At this point, they just want to stop. They don't want people taking anything from there, you know? No, yeah, yeah. for sure. It, you can't get an idea of the size of this thing, Rich. Wait till you see the poster of it coming Is it up. huge? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish, there was, I wish the pictures were in order because you got that and then you go back to Happy Wedding. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I figured you'd be putting this all together for me, you know? I know, and I just bulk drop them in. When you send me 100 photos, I just go... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So, hey, it's all yeah. good. We'll what, did you think time. I was going to put it together? Wedding music and stuff, and well, you the, know, I, I the wind I beneath my dream, wings right? and everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was my wedding day, wedding party. Um, this is actually another old truck, thirty-seven. This is my father-in-law's truck. Uh, again, awesome day, a lot of fun. Hands down, probably the best day of my life. That's cool. I love that truck. That's sweet. Yeah, we had a bunch of old vehicles there that day. My rat rod, Ahmed's rat rod, uh, this pickup truck, and then a uh, and then another old uh, Model A. There we go. Another another picture. Is that the yeah. same day? Yeah, same day. Just me and my old man at the trains. 
again along the river with my wife. Katahdin in the background there. Yeah, that's sweet. Can you go up there and ride? Like, did they mount sled up there? No, 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 you're not allowed. Is that a national park? Uh, it's Maine State Park. There are videos somewhere, or not videos, but pictures of a snowmobile up there. I mean, way, way back, though, probably 70s, maybe. Yeah. And somebody took somebody took a sled up there. That's wicked. Yeah. Me and my wife here, this is when we were at the, the last show for uh, – for BRP that they had, that was down in Cancun for the release. Uh, what was that? 2021 release. Yeah. I think, it, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I found play. that odd. I found that odd that they did club in, in Mexico when it was, uh, you know, it's for snowmobiles. Right. But they did see you at the same time. Did they not? Uh, no. Sea was in Vegas. They did, um, can't, they, they had Canium there. They had on road. I want to say they had on road there, or maybe just some off road stuff. But uh, yeah, kind of a weird place to have a snowmobile show. But my wife and I had a great time, and uh, she keeps bugging me, "Hey, when are we going to be able to go to another show?" And hopefully, mm -hmm. they have one here soon. Yeah, nice. She's spoiled now. Oh, she is. This is uh, welcome to the North Main Woods. Um, so many logging roads up there to go and explore. If anybody gets a chance to be, you know, in that area, the Moosehead area, North Main Woods, all the way kind of bordering up to, to Canada. Uh, like I said, big, big country out there. You can see a lot of moose. <laughs> License sticker. That's, they did. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, geez. I know. Um, That's the, uh, the, the, it says no snowmobile on plowed roads, but there's trails through there. Is there? There is. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And if it's not plowed, uh, you can ride on it. Yeah. Wow. Right on. You, you don't ever want to come across a, a, a logging truck the other way. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. So a couple of pl old Polarises and, uh, and a do there, huh? Yeah. So those are our uh, <laughs> those are our vintage bombers. Um as you can tell, the screws in, in best shape there. Yeah, that's amazing shape. Wow, it looks good. Yeah, we had a lot of fun on those. Yeah, that, is that the one you sold? That is the one. Yep. Yeah. Geez, look at it's even got the stickers up on the dash. That's cool. I wish I could get my '69 Nordic back. That was I, I especially now I got a 3D printer. I could actually print a lot of the parts that were missing on it on oh, the okay. cons on the console. It's yeah. Uh, it's pretty crazy, but yeah. That's, look at the deep back on it. Is that the, is that stock? You probably can't see it in that picture because it's so dark. But there's actually a rear seat back. Yeah, no, that was all how I when I bought it. That was all on there, um, just like that. We this is actually on top of a mountain um, in New Hampshire, Lake Winnipesaukee. This is on top of Mount Major, and uh, we rode these things to a buddy's ice shack and he says, Hey, let's go up Mount major. I'm like, we ain't going to make it up Mount major with these things. And sure enough, we made it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's great. Well, you got to think about back in the day. That's all they had to ride. And they used to mountain ride with them and go wherever you want. Right. Yep. What's that thing ride? Like I didn't find my Nordic road that bad. I was spoiled because that's the only year I rode it was 2015 and we had really, really good snow and I could ride that thing flat out. You know, I mean, it went so fast, you know, probably 35 miles an hour that the windshield would actually kind of bow in on it. You know, that's when you know you were really getting after it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when the windshield sure. start caving in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like, did an engineer take this out this fast? I don't think he did when he was making this windshield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this is another... This is Katahdin in the background. Uh, that rock there, Key Bay, beautiful. Uh, this is on what we call the State Road, uh, heading down into Millinocket. Um, it, another spot that people stop by a lot and take pictures. But as you can see, another beautiful day riding up there. Oh, yeah. Do you get a lot of those bluebird days there? You know, we've been fortunate lately. We have. Um, but, you know, in the past, it hasn't been that great. And, uh, they said we get him every once in a while. That's there she is. The day yeah. the day that I bought her and brought her in the shop. So there's your there's a good shot of your back rest, Gary. 
Yeah, no, that's right. I that's funny. I. I don't know, 1972, it almost looks like a newer seat on that thing, but maybe not. Well, that's you know, because like, it's got, when it has so much power, you know, it really stretches your arms out. You don't want to fly off the back. Oh, yeah, for sure. And actually, that <laughs> thing's so short, you would, your butt would be back there. Yeah. Right? Like, like that is, that's more probably for the driver than the passenger. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that thing's really good. It even has the bump, it even have the rubber padding around the bumper. The pull yeah, handle, was, the grab handle. That was a that was a good find. Yeah. What's it sitting on there? Is that a lift? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's on the lift with the fork truck there. Yeah. Lazy river ride. Oh yeah, this is uh oh this is me and my buddy Ahmed again. Um, <laughs> Love it. We're in the uh, this is the Saco River Fourth of July, um, just a time to kind of get away, floating down the river. Always a good time. There's a nice rock rock clip cut way back there too. So that's actually uh, that's Kenny O again. Um, and it seems like you know whenever I'm heading north, this is in the uh, the town of Rockwood. This is where my father's camp is. And uh, whenever I see this sign, it's like, all right, we're here. It's like the whole weight of the world's lifted off your shoulders, and you know you're you're going to be relaxing for a little while. Yeah, nice. Did you go to the pig roast that's there on that sign? Uh no, I I didn't go to that one. Uh, typically, I I uh, give them a couple of giveaways because that's the local snowmobile club, Blue Ridge Riders. They do an unbelievable job. Um, but yeah, it's usually Labor Day weekend, and uh, that's my anniversary weekend. So typically, I'm I'm at home with the wife. Yeah, right on. Here's a celebrity sighting. Rich, you recognize this guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Levi, right on. Yeah. Um, this was down at the uh, – this is at the Polaris show down in uh, in Texas a few years ago. Um, um, I got to tell you, have you ever met Levi? No. No, not personally. No, no. Very, very personable. I mean, mm -hmm. approachable, not no ego, just very down-to-earth guy. Really, really cool guy. Yeah, that's what, yeah, I, that's heard. what I heard. That's what I heard. And he's, yep. he's short. I didn't realize he was that short. Yeah, I was shocked, too. The first time I saw him, I'm like, whoa, he, he is pretty short. I mean, I'm about six feet tall. Um, so, yeah, he's, uh, he's a little guy. Good get together. Oh, this weekend was great with, the, uh, with all the restrictions lifted at restaurants and no QR codes. And it's uh, the place was packed. We would wait 30 minutes. So seeing pictures like this is, I used to envy the Americans because everybody in fan photos would send in photos of big gatherings like this. And we were going like, man, we can't even, you know, we can't even look at each other without putting a mask on. <laughs> it's this, true, right? this picture here, this is actually kind of funny. So uh, a good friend of mine is, is at the, the head of the table there in the back. Uh, his name's Jeff in, it was so cold at, at this place that he's actually feeding the wood stove in order to keep us warm while we ate. <laughs> wow. Wow. Holy crow. Eh? That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Another really, really good friend of mine that I ride with quite a bit. Uncle Buck says, Kevin, tell us about the new 900R from Polaris. The new 900R. Um, it's a modded 900, uh, naturally aspirated. I think they're saying it's putting out seven percent. You know how Polaris is rich with their with their horsepower. Yeah, seven percent more horsepower, twelve percent more torque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, I think it's going to do well for them for that for those people that don't necessarily want to boost. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see. You know, you know, does it come to the trail segment here uh, in the years to come? But um, from people that have been riding it so far, they uh, they really like it. I know Barant's got some time on it, and, and he really says he likes it so far. So. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, well, won the great. hill climb too with that with that motor. Yes, yes, that is correct. Yeah, it uh, it just gets everybody to step it up that one bit more, right? Yeah, like twelve percent yeah. torque, man. It's know, the torque insane. that I'm interested, in, not the horsepower. Like yeah. everyone doesn't understand that it's the torque. Twelve percent torque over the eight fifty. Oh, that thing's gonna pull. Yeah, yep. oh, for sure. And and just me, like, uh, don't get me wrong. Like, I think the boost is all great. Everyone's all horny over that. But look at the price of gas right now. You start getting on that up in Cochrane or North Bay or 
like you're, you're, the gas is gonna you, anyways that's just my opinion right like to each their own but yeah uh, i don't know about a, about a turbo on this on a trail sled but who knows yeah that's a lot of power i mean what are they talking 185 horsepower out of the that's two what they're saying. Now? yeah I that's mean, insane you know if you're in that in that throttle all day long i mean it's definitely you know with, like you said to your point the, the price of gas right now i mean yeah hopefully we get a handle on this before long but uh for sure yeah i think I think it's going to start to to affect some people's decisions if it if it sticks around. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Kevin, any yeah. word on a reflash on the computer in the twenty two Mach Z? Um, I haven't heard much about it as far as a reflash. Is there something specific that you're having an issue with um, on that machine that you that you're inquiring about? It's Seems. like anything, I think, Kevin. I think over the time, like I, I heard that they're going to be tweaking the smart shocks too settings. Like I think over when you know introduce new technology and, and different things, especially the turbo, right? They'll probably yep. have some flash updates and all that down. I mean, that's just me talking. I don't know anything. I'm just, you know, thinking outside the box type thing, right? Yeah, and and I'll share this with with you guys right now. Um, I don't know if you've had people complaining about power out of the 900 R. It seems like uh, the turbo R, I should say, for the SKU. Mm -hmm. um it seems like you either have a good one or you have one that's not so good and what not by i shouldn't say not so good but just doesn't seem to be have that power that people expected right yeah. and you know i've had people that bought 900 turbo r's it doesn't matter if it's in a mod z or an xrs or whatever um you know they'll say geez it, it goes really really good or you get the guy that says geez it's just it's not what i anticipated that it would be and um, a good friend of mine has one, and he was telling me, he's like, geez, it just it feels numb. I can't get more than 99 miles an hour out of it, and I should be able to get more. Well, we took it in, and we started digging, and uh, one of my uh, one of our techs in the shop, he has a pretty good relationship with one of the guys at BRP you know, on the service side of things. So he called him directly, and uh, he's like, hey, listen, what we ended up finding is some of the TPSs um, weren't learned from the factory. So when you put the cool. machine on the computer, and you pull that throttle wide open, it was only achieving 89% throttle opening. There you go. So, you know, there's you've probably seen some of the stuff out there uh, in the forums that these things aren't achieving the 17 and a half pounds of boost that they were advertised and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, but if the throttle is only opening 89%. Makes sense. There's a problem. So uh, we relearned that TPS. We got an opening 100%. He's actually up now riding it. So... I'm hoping to get some feedback for him and, and hope, hopefully we'll be able to, uh, you know, cure some of these problems. So if that's what that listener was uh, referring to, maybe that's something to look into if he's not getting the performance that he wants out of his uh, magazine. Yeah, that's yeah. a great explanation there. Everyone likes the, the green and blue on this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, tra the track looks really good shape. Yeah, no, and this has got all northern miles on it, never beaten, you know. Um, <laughs> you probably asking 18 grand for this thing. <laughs> but Love this it. is uh, this is my good buddy, Kevin. Um, he is always – he always he's entertainment, you know. And uh, we call him the ditch monster uh, for obvious reasons. But he uh, he went off the trail here. We were doing some uh, some off trail stuff, and he went in the ditch. And I says, "Wait, wait, wait! Before you go anywhere, I got to get a picture of this." And uh, he's giving me thumbs up here, and he's a good sport. <laughs> Love having him on along for our trips. Yeah, road nan miles. <laughs> yeah, yes, I love yes. that in the ad. Road nan miles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's probably yeah. going to kill me for for seeing this picture, but he yeah, knows right it's on. a good fun. That's so I awesome. should switch the thumbnail, the 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 live cast to this. <laughs> to this <show. laughs> Your buddies, it'll be on YouTube. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. There's the uh, there's the Olympic again. Yeah, nice. again. Do you have any more uh, vintage stuff at the dealership than this? Like I know some dealers have collections, and you mm -hmm. know, uh, I do. I Gary actually has a uh, an Olympic upstairs too. I think that one's a, I think that one's a seventy four possibly that he has. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the real cool pieces I, I should have taken a picture of it for and sent it over is uh, we've actually got a '69 Sea Oh, uh, no way. those are yeah. cool. Yeah, that's a really cool. Uh, that's a really cool piece. And you know, the last few years, I haven't had any inventory for Sea so I end up putting it on the floor and uh, 
you know, I, I probably could have sold it a couple of times, but I don't think I would have made any points with Mr. Robertson if I did that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No way. Yeah. That's a keeper. Yeah. That's a non sell On that last picture, Ryan wanted to know if that's the Kijiji side of the sled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wife ridden when it's yeah. for sale. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Those uh, those T and Ts are underrated. There, the, uh, the the I think they just yeah you either go for the bullet nose or you go a little bit later and and get the RV or the or the blizzards. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I do want to get a silver bullet if I can find one. So oh yeah, you know yeah. Did any trail survive down south near Huntsville? I think they did. I'm just kind of cr- crossing oh, my man. fingers. They had a lot of base. They had a good. I can't believe how much snow they got in the last two weeks there. Yeah, That's I insane. drove by Dorset, buddy, and it looked pretty. But you know what? It, it, they'll they'll be able to, if they get a lot more cold. And I think my buddy said they got four inches today. So yeah, well, I heard you know. that. I heard they got ten centimeters uh, yeah. this morning. So and it was still yeah. it's snowing tomorrow too. So oh, that's good. Then. I don't know. Yeah. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll see. Yeah, Gary could be up at Mary Lake again. <laughs> oh, I don't care if there's snow or not. I'm hitting Mary Lake this weekend. <laughs> You're going to be been, riding on the been, road, eh? I mean, hey, Rich, I he's, already blown, he's already blown his carbides off the thing, so it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, funny, man. <laughs> so and many, we, have so new, many... we have brand new carbides on, on Roscoe because he's got the Curve XS skis, so he's got lots <laughs> of rubbing to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so. yeah, someone asked me what I thought about the Curve skis, and man, they're awesome. They oh, are, how do you like them? Oh, dude, they're, they're awesome. And I good. ran into a guy on the trail yesterday that had him on his Gen Four, and and yeah. he he said the same thing. And and one thing that he agrees with is that that it doesn't matter the trail conditions if it's hard pack or if it's real fluffy stuff, it mm-hmm. neutralizes it all. Yeah, it's, see, that's what I find with my gripper ski. skis. It's yep. a good ski, no matter what you're riding in. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So and Drew's got more seat time on it than I have. So hopefully. If we do get out this weekend, I'm gonna try and, yeah. and ride the old sled more so that yeah. I can. And he likes get a it. Drew, Drew likes it. He oh, likes he loves it. it. He said oh, it's good. night and day. Like within oh, good. within 50 feet of of hitting the trail, I seen him going back and forth, and and uh, and he was going like, I can't believe like how how you point it and it goes. And the other right thing on. is there's no darting. We put those nice. um, those thrusters on it too, and okay. they actually they're the things that you're. You know how um, Steve was saying that he didn't need scratchers with them because it yes. kicks up enough snow? Yep. He probably had thrusters on it because the thrusters yep. are on the inside and yep. they're throwing all kinds of snow. Kinds of snow, track. right on. Yeah. Good, right cool. on. That's good yeah. to everybody. Yeah, I'm going to do a review on them on, on the channel. But yeah, definitely. Right like, uh, I was, I, I believe the guy that they were good, but I didn't think they'd be that good. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, so, my buddy swore by it. He said they were great yeah. skis. So. Snowstorm says, do a video. I'm going to, I've got, I've got a bunch of stuff to put together. I did some video on the 360 camera with them, and the the video was corrupt. So that's oh, uh, I got to reshoot a bunch of that stuff. So yeah, yeah, right on. But, Good. Yeah, that's cool. The ever changing vistas of Mary Lake. Yeah. <laughs> and the um, we well, if I get, get up there to, this weekend, bud, we'll get together. We're good. I don't know what I'm get, doing. Yeah, we're getting close to to that uh, uh, yeah. on the weekend. We went right to Baysville. I'm going like I was going to Mike. We are like 20 minutes from my place. Like we should go over there. And then when we finished lunch, it was like, yeah, we should probably head back. And it was good because we got back at 830. And yeah. the trails don't get any better down south the later you wait, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, what's this this interesting hill? That's pretty neat. It looks like a nose. That's, uh, that's, that's Kineo again, just a different angle of it. Now, that's late in the season. You could see the, uh, the river starting to push into the lake there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and then two Spencer mountains out in the background. I mean, just a beautiful area. It's high mountains, but they're they're very spread out, aren't they? In this area, they are. That's neat. I I was checking out this dealership, eh? Laporte Sports. What is that? So La this is in um, this is right outside of Quebec, a little bit out of Quebec. I want to say it was. Uh, oh, sorry, not Quebec, Montreal. Um, so it's funny because I've looked at this dealership. I've seen pictures of this dealership many times online, and I just thought it was a beautiful dealership. And 
when I knew that we were going to Montreal, I looked to see where this was and I had to go visit this dealership. And um, the staff there was unbelievable, even though I, obviously I wasn't buying anything, but they were very friendly, wanted to talk. And, and that store inside is beautiful, beautiful. Uh, that's big, uh, holy wicked. Cool. Well, that's like contact uh, in in um, Quebec as well uh, with the with the glass windows. And I don't know whether you can see it in the photo here, mm -hmm. but there's there's actually ATV snowmobiles and and spiders in each that's of cool, those right? windows. And yeah. uh, yep. and it's probably you know four times that window on the one you're driving along the highway and you see contact. I think it is that or Countach, and yeah. they it's it's all like almost like little boxes of toys in crazy there. Eh? yeah it's pretty cool i i actually went to find that dealership i actually got off the highway and booted around got a photo radar ticket but you know what it was well worth it every every minute in there it was a really cool dealership so that dealership gary when you went in there i because i think i went to that dealership as well while i was up there they have their used sleds in racks inside of the showroom right yes they do yep yeah yeah yep, yep. No, I went to that that place as well. Um, this one here just blew me away, though. Yeah, and that's before, yeah. like, like this is before, like, energy power sports is pretty slick. Like, it's all black inside and neat lighting and uh, big graphics and tension fabric graphics and stuff in there. And it's really modern and high end. Uh, you, well, you'll, you've seen it behind me in the in original uh, mm -hmm. start of the show there. And yeah. that that was before that look came to be for BRP. And I mean, they were doing it right. Yeah. Anyone yeah. see the new Rack Spin Dew dealership in Capascasin? Yes. Ryan's I drove by it. I, I snowmobiled by it. It's it was massive. It looked like a Walmart. Really? That's and then awesome. we drove by his old his old shop, which was two old buildings. Right. Well, you can see BRPs pushing them to these these car like dealerships. Like oh, I, yeah, I was blown sure. away by the size of this place it, it, it was and i'm not kidding you it was like the size of a walmart it was wow. huge like yeah crazy man but well though the contact in that one there that we just showed is pretty big man Holy oh yeah. yeah yeah those are big stores yeah, for sure. windmill, eh? so you were in ontario when you shot ontario canada when you shot this photo the windmills no, this is it windmills and power lines right there <laughs> yeah that's it you're we're well you're actually like north of waterloo <laughs> <laughs> this year uh this is actually the first time i ever saw windmills like you know up close uh this was down in eustace maine um probably i don't know 80 90 mile trip down from from my father's camp out to this place here and to see these things in person up up close you know it's pretty impressive yeah they're massive aren't they yeah yeah yeah, yeah. To, just to hear them you know just go by you get that whoosh you know every it's time crazy yeah yeah it was pretty neat and awesome views up here. This is all on the side of a mountain. Yeah, Beautiful. you know what? Nice you, know what you know what their favorite music is? What's that? They're huge metal fans. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Gary, how long you been saving that one up, buddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. No, they're great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, digging out some more. This is another one. Yeah, I'm going to show a picture of my stuck up in Sudbury there. Yeah, this is yeah. when you, this is when you take trail sleds with you on uh, some, some stuff they probably shouldn't be, and then they go right in the ditch. Yeah, yeah nice, <laughs> nice. That's crazy. Right on the edge yep. of there. Yeah, Polaris. In the ditch. Who, who's the lucky one that gets to pull on the ski on that one? Well, it's funny because he's the he's the one that put it in the ditch, the one that's pulling on the ski. There. Is that right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love it. This was a, a trip. A bunch of us went down to a restaurant there in, in Millinocket. This is actually at a place called Sawmill Restaurant. Great time down there. Let's see who's in there. Ahmed's in there. My buddy Josh, my father, his wife. My buddy nice. Jack, Kevin, and my wife. Yeah, we had that was yeah. a big crew that day. That's, That's awesome. There he is giving the big thumbs up. Yeah. So, actually, this was on uh, one of my last trips this year. Uh, this is a, a boom house that's behind me, and because of Maine was so rich with um, with logging, 
they would used to float the logs down down the rivers and into these in, into lakes and they would have these big booms that they would collect all the logs and um and the men that worked these booms stayed in places like this and this place right here i actually just put a uh, video of my trip out to this boom house on our on our youtube channel oh. um inside one of the guys a uh, local guy has resurrected this and it's kind of like a museum now um and you could look in the windows and you could see you know all the old clothing the tools that were used back in the day for logging um it's pretty neat it's it's on an island on Amber Jesus lake and uh you can canoe out to it uh, or kayak out to it in the summertime and you can actually they let you in the in the house in the in the summertime they just ask for a small donation it was really cool I, I i like it i'm a history guy so i like to see that stuff yeah that's cool yeah that's neat i love it <laughs> and there we go uh, another uh, celebrity sighting <laughs> yeah another really yeah. cool guy you know Brant's a little Brant's a little taller yeah a little bit By taller three yeah. feet <laughs> <laughs> no again another real approachable guy that was down in texas as well at the uh at the polaris show right on yeah cool have you had a chance to meet him rich no no i haven't no no yeah. and, and the thing is is like he's a little bit taller but he's he's very skinny and lanky and be able to see him throw a sled around the way he does pretty impressive yeah it is crazy eh? yeah yeah that's what they say yeah there's the pooch uh, again right is yeah that your is that your your belly we're looking at or were you boating with me last <laughs> summer no no that's that's my old man <laughs> I, you know, listen. I probably had him be. I'm probably a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> right oh, I know. I know. <laughs> hey, why? Why buy a? Why work on a six pack when you can have the whole keg? That's yeah, right. yeah, you know. That's right. <laughs> what kind of that's dog right. is? What kind of dog is that? She is a lab pit bull mix. No, oh, right, right on. Right on. That's cool. Yeah. That's gorgeous. She's a rescue dog, and. uh She's she's awesome. First dog I've ever had. And I, I honestly I tell people this all the time. I'm like, you know, whenever it's time to get another dog, man, she set the bar so damn high. I don't know if That's it's awesome. even you know, anybody could or any dog could live up to what she's done for me, you know. Yeah. That's right on. yeah. That is Ooh. that the truck before you that, started? That's where I started right there. No way. Yeah, oh, dude. Yes. How many hours did you put into that, Kev? How much? How oh, much? Geez. four. We, like, four. So it was an afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we spent uh, six months building that truck. Wow. Um, after work on the weekends, my buddy Josh, he's a uh, he's an auto body guy. He he really helped me out a ton. I I didn't really know much about building trucks. I just had this idea that I wanted to build one, and I sold a Harley that I had in order to do it. And uh, he's like, "Hey, I'll give you a hand building one." And and we built it together. We had a blast doing it. Right on. That's it, way it actually, this truck here, uh, one of our customers, uh, in customer slash neighbor, great guy right down the street from us. He walked in one day and I have, happened to ask him, I says, hey, do you happen to have any like, you know, mid thirties uh, pickup trucks or anything that weren't complete? You know, he says, I've actually have one that's been sitting out in the, uh, out in the field, out in the woods a little bit for like 28 years. He says, Come down, take a look at it, make me an offer, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. Right on. Oh, there's another angle of that. See, you got to put him in yeah. order. Yeah, I apologize. Hey, listen, yeah. I, I I had big <laughs> expectations here. I thought you were going to put this all together, slideshow, music, the whole yeah. night. Yeah. Oh, Gary, he doesn't know, eh? Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, hey. But in all honest, in all fairness here, Rich, he told me, he says, hey, listen, I've got to have these photos in early because I spend all day working on them, you know? So now I know yeah. for next time, you'll have to have me on again. And who knows, maybe I'm going to have to pay to come on the show you, next you time. Don't, you don't <laughs> but, even have to. It'll cost you one trail seat bag. <laughs> one trail seat bag, right. That's it, yeah, right. in, Including yeah. shipping. The, um... hey, listen, <laughs> that's fine. I'll send you a trail seat bag. But it's gonna be locked closed, so you can never open, <laughs> open it. That's it. Eh? It's on shut. Oh. I'll take it. I just need it for looks. Then how am I gonna lock it on? How am I gonna lock it on? Oh man. Yeah. So, yeah, there was one guy asked me about, it and I said I really like the bag, and then he was talking about the uh, the link bracket, and I said you need the longer screws for the link bracket because the the ones that come with the battery cover aren't long enough. He goes, "Will the bag fall off if you don't switch the screws?" I said. 
falls off if you do. <laughs> no, that bag is on there. It, it just didn't get lodged down for whatever. Reason. I have a hunch. Oh, but man. I'm it's it's too funny. much of a gentleman. You see, Corey, so. did you lose shit again, Gary? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, well. For sure. No, really? your bag's open. Because we seen a glove in the tree. When we he said that to me in the last video, there was a glove hanging in the tree. And he goes, Hey Gary, you lost your bag, you lost stuff again. And <laughs> I said, and I thought it was talking about the glove, and that's why I said, Yeah, whatever. And then he goes, No, your bag's unzipped. And then he goes, No, really, it is unzipped. And he has it. Here's your here's your granola bar. <laughs> yeah, what about all the other crap in there? Fifty dollar uh, tow hook set and a, a eighty dollar GoPro arm and oh my god. So <laughs> yeah, so. Anyway, I'm putting stickers on everything from here on out. I don't want anything <laughs> back. It's just going to say, you're welcome, mud brats. Yeah. <laughs> Corey Brock, it's always an adventure riding with Gary. <laughs> yeah, Sounds you should, like you should have been there Saturday. You missed it. That free ride color. I love that color. Yeah, it's, it's yeah that's that's the sled when you in its natural habitat sitting upright you know sitting upright yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. the manta green and the blue that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah that was a 2017 yeah. 2017 yeah that's a picture of me and my old man i was actually i was riding out of salt that that year uh yeah. down, down along the river again with katan in the background cool have you have you ridden an assault yeah i had two before uh my xcr Yep. I had an awesome Axis and then, and then went to the Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good, a good fun sled, but it, I needed to change it up a bit. So now, how do you there. like, how do you like your um, Matrix compared to the, uh, to the Axis? Much, much better riding position. Just the way you sit on the sled is much better. Now, yeah. how, how do you like the seat? Uh, I like it. Um, like, so it's really weird. Uh, two of my buddies got XCRs with soft seats. Mine was stiff as a rock, like a board. And I like it. Like it's, really? we couldn't figure that out, whether they had foam issues or the seat supplier changed. We literally, all three of us had different seats. So That's it was weird. weird. And theirs was softer. One of them was really soft. The other one was kind of medium and mine was very firm, but I like the firmer for sliding and moving around. Just, that's yep. just me. Right. So. But no, I like the seat. No, I, I like the way you sit on that sled. I really do. Like my buddy Steve said that too, and he's got a 600X Skidoo that he got this year. He said, the Polaris, it just seems like it fits like a glove. It's weird. Yeah. You get on it yeah, and it I, just... I yeah. like the way the panels of a Polaris fit me when I sit on it. Yes. Just the, the angle of the panel where your shins yep. go up against it, just it just seems yep. like it's, it's spot on, you know? Yep. Yep. No, nope, for sure. But the, the assault was fun, Kevin. It was it was it was a hoot, man. I mean, it was just a wheelie demon, right? <laughs> but, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I I enjoyed riding that one. Uh, my buddy rode one for a few years, um, and then this year he happened to pop on one of the expedition extremes. Wanted to give that a shot this year. Right and, on. Uh, no, that's good. No, awesome sleds. But that I'm, I want to ride an expedition extreme now. I uh, see that. <laughs> yeah, try one out. Yeah. Uh, he's just oh, wow. he's more interested idea. in having a big box and, and listen you can actually put a lock on that box gary so yeah. that way they're not losing stuff well that's saying you'd ha the key is you have to put the lock on the box uh, the, yes that's <laughs> step one he'd lose I'd the put, lock i'd that's put the, the lock thing. on the top of the box and then <laughs> it would be drive gone off. out the back yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then i'd lose the lock and all the box content box content right yeah no cory brock you, told me cory told me to go back and get the toe straps and everything out of the bag when and I, we had such a horrible morning with the torsion springs and everything. I was like, no, I made a pack that after I went, Drew and I went back in Kirkland Lake to look for the, the trail seat bag. And we, we, it was cold as hell. Like it was minus 40 at night. And we went out because I had good faith that somebody found it and just put it up on the side of the trail or whatever. So we went far to, to the last known location that I had it and, uh, and froze our tail off that night. And uh, didn't find it, so I made a pact after that that I was never going to go look for anything I lost. Yeah, you just know, keep going. Just, just write it off, right? And that's so, it. Stick yeah. a decal to it, Gary, like you do on your drone. If found, it, call. Exactly. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. The yeah. drone is probably in the bag. Who knows? <laughs> uh, there was a there was a Sony there was a Sony action camera fell out around here, so yeah. that was yeah. that was the the uh, 
the, the, the local riding here. So, but that gives you an idea how big that furnace is that we're looking at. Like, look at the that's size huge, of the free man. ride next to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that actually, huge. that's um, that's another assault. Yeah. Oh, yep. that's an assault. Sorry. Yeah, yep. that is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So a little bit better shot. So uh, the, real, yeah. the real sled's behind me here, right there. The ski do is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Crazy colors on the uh, the assault this year. Oh well, for some of the matrix, eh, Kevin? My yes. buddy calls it the Ronald McDonald sled. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there was a skidoo not too long ago. I mean, that's... was it a Renegade XRS that yeah. was that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ketchup yeah. and mustard. The lime yeah. squeeze and orange coming back. They combined yeah. it. I remember. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This place looks familiar to you guys at all? Fenway, baby. Fenway. Yep, the Green Monster. The green Monster. The I was right behind. Is... See where Think Energy was? I was sitting right there, and then got a tour That's of the park. Cool. That's a oh, wicked. You, you, see those, you see those beams, Gary? They literally yeah. have seats sit right behind the beams. They sell seats you could sit. Oh, right that's behind insane! The so you have to look yeah. around them. Yep, yep. That's wild. That's a that park's amazing. It's got wicked history. Yeah, yeah. We we love my wife and I both. We love going down there. As you know, I can't get there as frequently as we want, but just something about being there. You know, it's uh, it's a pretty cool place to go. Yeah, that's how you sure. see a ball game for sure. Yep, yeah. I just love, I don't watch, get go to Fenway Park. Yeah, I don't watch baseball, but I love going to the Sky Dome and watching a watching a baseball game. Like I don't watch yep. it on TV, but I just love the yep. air, the sound, like everything about yep. it. Like, it's just yep. such a great experience to see it in person. It you know, mm -hmm. it is. One of my favorite movies too was shot in there. The town it was awesome. The town. Yeah. Yes, that is that's right. Yeah, it was a great movie. Yeah, there's my mascot right here. there. Yeah, right on. He doesn't look overly uh, happy. <laughs> He's like, no, what's going on with my? She's like, you know, what's going I, on with the hat? I put I put a hat on her, and she's like, no, not having it. But uh, yeah. I was lucky to get this picture. Right on. I, I, I think she'd be happier with an energy power sports hat on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About that trail bag that I was going to send. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It would never get through customs anyway. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Oh, man. I tell you, I get more parts that get held up at customs. Like, oh. You know, it sucks. Anyway, they flip a coin whether you're going to pay duties or not. One week, you, you, you like you're sitting there going, Oh, am I going to hear from the border? You know, the, the, uh, what do you call it? The, Customs. You know, customs, customs, yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah. am I going to get a broker report to this time? Like, it's weird. Three quarters of your stuff gets through, you're fine, and then all of a sudden, it's like, really? I got to pay it on that? Come on. Yep. Yep. So stupid, exactly. Man. Ridiculous. There's the uh, the vintage sleds on top of Mount Major again. That nice. Would be fun. That would be. What is that? In the, is that a fort or something like a like an old part of a building or something that we're looking you at? You know, yeah, yeah. I don't really know what uh, what that is. I. I'm sure somebody um, local probably knows. I never really dug much into it, but um, yeah, it looks like a, like a foundation of some sort. Yeah, it's neat. Hmm. It's high up. You wonder if it's, it, you know, maybe there was an absorb observatory there at one point in time. <laughs> Could have been. Right? Could have been. That's cool. Yeah, this is, uh, this is myself and my wife and my father. This was at the uh, B-52 crash site. Oh, cool. Right on. How much of the plane is still there? We, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the other one. This, this, we've had this sent in on fan photos before. That Look same photo? Yeah. The, well, not not the exact same photo, but that location. Yeah. This is uh, this is Coburn Mountain. This is uh, in the Forks area, uh, in Maine. Um, very popular uh, area to go ride to, and and actually uh, one of the locals. Uh, who owns uh parlin pond uh his name's joe he he actually started running a groomer up to the top of this mountain um and made it more accessible for people to get up here and he's done a heck of a job with it and uh, he actually posted a video um uh, not too long ago on the um, coburn summit riders uh, facebook page yeah. of him going up with the groomer breaking it and going through some snow drifts and he talks about how he has to you know put so much snow in certain areas to flatten the trail out going up and it was really cool to watch him do that. And, you know, these guys put in so much time into the trails, you know, and uh, all for us to be able to go up there and enjoy it. So definitely you get up there on a bluebird day and you can see 
uh, great, awesome views up there. Yeah, that's cool. Field Z9 says it's worth a watch. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that one up too. But yeah, I can't remember who sent that in, but uh, I love the snow ghosts too. That's uh, those trees all covered in snow. I yeah, can't say that the solar panels are doing any good with, with you know, six inches of ice built on them, but we'll see there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is that the same same hill but different view up no that's actually over on saddleback um where i had a picture of me and my father but this this whole picture right here i don't know if you can tell but uh everything's inc encrusted in ice it's ice yeah yeah that's yeah. cool ice right. storm yeah wicked so we uh the day before it rained a little bit and um it got really really cold and and we were coming up from that katahdin ironworks coming up the mountain and uh, all the trees, everything was ice. And the way the sun was coming through, it just, like, would create, like, all these prisms. And uh, it That's was cool. That's cool, the colors there, too, man, with the blue sky up, like, in the circle and then the dark blue, dark cloud. That's a wicked, wicked picture. Yeah, no, that yeah, was... Uh, sun coming through. I, I had never seen anything like it with the amount of ice, and it was just, it was just a cool shot. Yeah, that's wild. You wouldn't want to have been riding when it was that icy. This is going to be the <laughs> thumbnail right here. <laughs> right on. That's awesome. <laughs> so funny story behind this. This was actually at my wedding. This was me entering in uh, to the reception. And uh, you guys obviously don't know me that well, but I, I like to have a good time. I like to keep it loose. And uh, <laughs> I told my wife, I said, listen, I says, at the wedding, I am going to have overalls on at some point. And she says, no, you're absolutely not going to. <laughs> and uh, I was able to pull this off. And I came into, uh, she thinks my tractor is sexy. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's I actually, weird. if I if I can find the video, Gary, I'll send it over to you. Uh, you you'll get a good kick out of it. That's oh, awesome. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's cool. wicked. That's good. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it's there we go. 52 crash site on Elephant Mountain has been designated off limits to all future salvage operations in the area surrounding the crash site is a no harvest zone by order of Scott Paper Company and Plum Creek Timber Company. But look at the bird. Isn't that's that insane? Easy. Yeah. Where yeah, did that crash actually. though? Because I, I, that's that's interesting. I remember, I think I saw a movie on it, but I can't remember if I did. Like it's, it seems to re ring a bell. How much of it is there? Like, is there still wings and everything like that, or do people take it out already? Um, you, there's still quite a bit there, and I think the debris field is much larger than what we actually can, yeah. you know, walk See. to again. You know, yeah. keep in mind, you saw my 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 father's belly there. Mine's bigger than that, so I don't do much walking. <laughs> 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 But from what you can see, I mean, there's there is quite a bit. Some of the landing gear is there. Um, obviously, you can see the fuselage there. Um, you know, and I think if you were to venture off more into the woods, the more you'd find. Yeah, probably yeah. right. What was the story behind that, Kevin? How did it go down? Um, actually, Gary, there's probably gravity. another rich gravity. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's another picture I think I sent over with a little bit of an explanation on it. But oh. there yeah, a, there uh, is, yeah, there is. It's coming up. Yeah. So oh, go ahead. Another... Sorry to cut you. You were gonna... oh, hold it. <laughs> oh wow, buddy, you're way back. No, no, we're we're good. We're good. Okay. If anyone right. has any favorites they want me to stop at, I can do that on the way. I gotta slow down as we get closer because I don't want to go past it. We're getting close. Next, yeah. You were talking there. You had you had a train of thought. You probably forgot now. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm useless now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, there. Back to ghost trains. Now yeah, you'll remember back to the ghost trains. This year, this was actually um, my first ever time making it there. Um, the guy way on the left in the blue jacket. That's my father-in-law, Roger. Uh, yeah. He was the first one to, to bring me out here, and he told me about it and. The guy in the middle, uh, great guy. He has since passed away, Vern. Um, oh, that was uh, that was a, that was a, a real fun trip going out there with them, and uh, yeah, no, that was uh, my first time. That's neat. That's neat to see. You know. Yeah, it is. Do you think yeah. if you if you put some sure start can of ether in your in there and you could fire that sucker up or what? Well, we tried and it didn't didn't go very well. Look at the size of that thing, eh? <laughs> crazy. And, and the thing, the cool thing with these is they actually, 
um, they hauled those in, disassembled, and then they assembled them. Assembled it, yeah. That's, that's insane. insane. Well, the yeah, amount of work people used to do for things like that, but think of how much easier it made their lives when yeah. they were hauling logs, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Another shot down by the river. That's on my uh, 18 Backcountry X. And uh, you notice how that trail seat bag is attached? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's so. <laughs> that's how you want to do it. Lado, it's right. It's it's that one right there. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Right there. Who knows? That could be it. it yours could have flowed down the river, you know? <laughs> it might, it might have. Throw it on. It I don't know. That one looks like it's zipped up, so it might not be mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love how that had the little liner inside that zips too, and, and it's expandable. I do miss it, you know? And the worst <laughs> part is a good friend of mine, Neil Owen, gave it to me. So it, uh, it had some, it had some uh, sentimental value. That's why I couldn't replace it. You know, for Neil. This is this inside that truck? That's inside the rat rod. That nice. shifter is freaking wow. awesome. So the seats in that are actually out of a commander. No way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Canadian Commander Limited. And that's cool. Uh, that's about as bare bones as it gets right there, guys. Yeah. That's wicked. There it is, his hand on the shifter there. That is yeah, awesome. that's nice right on. One, was it one a, of my was wife's a, favorite was pictures. Was it a three, three speed or what was in it? Uh, no, that was an automatic. Oh, it was an automatic? Okay. That yeah, the problem is with, with these older older vehicles, like down where your feet are, there's not a lot of room for pedals. Yeah. And uh, the steering stem went right down. So, excuse me, you literally had to drive this truck with two feet. You couldn't, you know, swing your your right foot over to hit the brake. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Right. It's so straight down. Yeah. You hit the yeah. column. And that's something, man. Eh? Wicked. That's pretty cool. A lot cool. of fun. A lot yeah, of fun. You have moose on your property too. That's wicked. That, I was, uh, I was blown away by, uh, I've got a, obviously a game camera down there and, uh, you know, if the thing goes off, I'm like, what the heck is this? And yeah, we had a moose down there this, uh, this past May. That's wicked. Yeah. And we don't have a lot of moose in down here, down this way. Mm -hmm. Um, so to be able to see one out on the property, that was, uh, that was pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. It's a skinny one. It looks like you need to leave some feet out for it. <laughs> There's plenty of greens around there. Yeah. True. True. <laughs> These were uh, my two rides this year. So I rode the Black Expedition Extreme, and then my good buddy Ahmed, he was on the uh, he was on the tan one. Right on. Yeah. Does it ever look smaller without the big trunk on it? <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> eh? That thing's awesome, man. So much fun. I mean, yeah, you had a lot of fun on that. I bet. Yeah, we. We actually uh, the last trip that we did out to the trains, we did a um, a backwoods trip i mean it was 170 miles total and i think maybe we did 15 or 20 miles of, of trail everything else was uh either logging roads or some private roads backwood stuff and we had an absolute blast right on. right on it'd be neat just to point that thing into the deep snow and just go see where you could go on it right oh but god you, yeah yeah like and you gotta you gotta winch if you get stuck so yeah you're good to go this uh this was down at one of the shows uh in vegas for uh for brp um wow. great time my buddy uh ahmed came with me on this trip and his wife and my wife and first time we ever went to vegas and i think i bet 20 bucks and lost it all and uh, i don't think i'm going to do that again now let me <laughs> let me ask you something so when i went to vegas and i this is you know within the last 10 years yeah i never you, you see this Vegas sign everywhere, right? On TV and everything. Yeah. And my mental image of the sign was this is a huge billboard, like way up high somewhere in town. You know what I mean? And this thing <laughs> is like 100 feet wide by 30 feet high. And yeah. then, then you see it. And I didn't believe it was the, the same sign because it's like a four by eight sheet of plywood. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like four feet off the ground. Like, look at it. That, that's like 10 feet off the ground. 
And I'm yeah. going like, that can't be the, the sign. And then I asked somebody and they go, yeah, that's it with the NASCAR. Like, there was NASCARs parked at it because it was yeah. the uh, the awards banquet weekend we were there, which was really cool. But I was yeah. like, I was kind of let down by it because I'm thinking, <laughs> man, like you, all you see is is like the, if you cover up the people below, you just see the sign. It's always taken on an angle and it looks huge. Yeah. And he, like the, we have the Schneider's Wiener Beacon near us, which is a massive sign. And uh, I was always thinking it's got to be the size of the Schneider sign, if not bigger. And it's not. No, it's really, small. Yeah, really small. So did you cool feel experience. that way too? Did you feel that way too? Or No, you're, you're spot on. I mean, we had uh, we took an Uber because, again, you know, I wasn't going to walk that far from the MGM. Oh, but, yeah, uh, it's, way, it's way up the street too. That's the <laughs> other thing, right? Well, yeah. I mean, one of the cool things was the Harley dealership was right, right by there. And I stopped in and grabbed a couple of shirts for some of the guys at the shop that like Harley. So killed two birds with one stone. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. But cool, cool experience overall, Vegas, you know? Yeah. I love it. I love it. And that's thing that they close the streets because the NASCAR uh, um, awards bank it was on. And then yep. all the drivers, like, so this is like Tony Stewart and then his crew chief was in like hanging out the passenger window. And like all the drivers were there, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his crew chief was hanging out the window. And then they come up to like, obviously the street lights weren't, the traffic lights weren't working or it didn't matter because they had right. streets closed, but they'd, they'd stop and do big burnouts. It was freaking loud and crazy <laughs> awesome. in the streets with a beverage in your hand and, and uh, it's just lined up with people. It was cool. That was the first. It's it, it. That was like the first weekend in. I want to say. I want to say maybe the first weekend in November. In November or first weekend in December. It must have been December that we were there because it was the next yeah, week. Because... They're starting to decorate for. Uh, for they're starting to decorate for Christmas. So we missed the Christmas decorations, but we got the NASCAR. Yeah, because usually the last race is right before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay, so it would have been first weekend in December, like that kind of time frame. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's another yeah. shot of that. See, if you put them in order. Yeah. Oh, that's the other side. This. That's the other yeah. side. <laughs> but you know what yeah. a good yeah. thing is, though, Rich? Everybody thinks it's a new photo. <laughs> so it's like, man, this guy runs into a lot of people. Uh. <laughs> I'm new at all this, you know. You got to cut yeah. me a little bit of slack. Oh yeah, oh, for wow, sure. Look at that, man. What do you have in that for an engine? Just a small block, three fifty. Three fifty. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's cool. Wicked job, very, though. Very cool. Then you got the forerunner in the background. <laughs> yep. Nice. Yep. Forerunner. That's I don't have that anymore. That's that's a few vehicles ago. Yeah. Keep main beautiful. Nice. Yeah, there's the painted rock again. Is that, that is that bit. a shot at the, the the only Polaris in that photo? Is that that is that a shot at it? Keep Maine beautiful. <laughs> with, with four four skidoo, beautiful skidoos lined up there. Yeah, that was uh, that was 2017. Uh, I had a uh, MXZX 850 there, and there's that yeah. sport again, the free ride, the assault, and then that was actually my father's uh, old GSX, the uh, XR chassis. 1200 yeah oh, actually yeah. that was 600 how wide e it is that was oh that was 600 e yeah. Really? yeah nice yeah that's a wide nice. look how wide that is yeah well the xr was a boat right that yeah was it touring, was that's a touring uh touring and Chassis, everything yeah yeah that's cool yeah that's neat i like how they uh they they took the gen 5 and they they put some hints of the xs and the links on it I think that's cool. That's why I like that that uh, Gen Five chassis so much, the or the body on it so much. Always XS is the nicest skidoo's made. Yeah, it's a nice machine. So you can see here uh, how far off the beaten path they got when they went in the ditch, and they they tend to follow each other, one right after another. Look. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. So you, yeah. What are you guys doing? Oh, well, monkey see, monkey do, I guess. Yeah, that's so right. Fieldsy9 says the history on that rock is in the 70s, everyone would paint with graffiti. So some art folk came and painted it so the graffiti would stop 
there you go. That's correct. There you go. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> and they do touch that rock up um, yeah. from time to time. Yeah, oh, nice. The, look at that. All the yeah. deer there. Lots of deer. Is that a, that's a feeder. That's a game feeder he's got. Yeah, it is too, eh? Yeah, it time, is. Yeah. Time senses, eh? They all come running out when it starts dropping. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. You know, that's that's uh, from my father's camp there, and uh, he feeds the deer and love seeing them come in. And, you know, uh, you'll get, you know, 15, 20 deer to come in, and they know, like, right around the time that that feeder is going to go off. It's it's pretty cool to see. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's funny. There's one big doe there. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a big, <laughs> the big thumbs up with the roll. <laughs> this is nice. this is another failed attempt to uh, get to the top of Kineo. This is Ahmed. Um, I told him just forget about it. Don't worry, we'll go another day. And he was hell bent on it, eh? <laughs> yeah, he comes on. Uh, he comes on the communicator. And he says, "Hey, I'm going to need a hand." And I come around the corner, and this is what I see. <laughs> and, and shortly after this is when we crashed into each other. So we didn't have a very good day. <laughs> It's all memories, though. You're making memories, right? That's it. Oh, God. You ain't kidding. I, I think that's a great day. It's better than having nothing happen. <laughs> you would have yeah. no pictures to uh, to send in. Brian says Pavlov deer hunting. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I hear that machine whir up, they'd all yeah. crowd around and then get that's your bowl awesome. out and just start going, right? <laughs> So there, ah, there's there the history there. Yeah. I was wondering when yeah. we were getting to that, man. We got sidetracked. I'm like, where's that? It was, it was right 1963. On. It crashed. Yeah. It flew out of Western for AFB, man. On a routine lo low level radar mission. Structural yeah. fault. Holy Clear shit. Six the, and three the, observers were on board to survive the crash. This is where it says of the two survivors, pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Bully parachuted the ground with a broken foot. His navigator, Gerald Alder, is the only person to survive an ejection from an aircraft without the parachute opening. He landed upright in the snow in his ejection seat. That's insane. Both men survived the night of minus 30 degree temperature and five feet of snow before they were rescued. Alder Jeez. retired from the Air Force. Bully went on to fly again. The other seven men on board perished in the crash, unfortunately. That's too bad. Yeah, it's sad, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's uh, it's quite the monument, that's for sure. Hmm. It's yeah, actually failed. Interesting. Yeah, the uh, and it's cool that they that they left it there for people to be able to go out and see. I mean, obviously, we see you know plane crashes on the news and stuff, and when you actually go out to one and actually see how large these debris fields are, um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy to see. Wild. Yeah, that's hmm. a massive. Like you look at the the. The cockpit area that you had yeah. a picture of, that's tiny. In that Just a photo. small, yeah. And that's a ma I mean, you could get one of the biggest aircrafts. That's huge. Yeah. Right? Oh, I know. It's yeah. insane. Is this inside your shop? It Not is. Your dealership? Yeah, nice. Really yep. nice. Oh, yeah, we, um, we we started doing some of the, the BRP stuff there. That's that's a small area right down by my desk. And, uh, you know we're we're a really really small shop and you know we try to do the best we can and and display everything really really nice and this this great, one man. this year came out pretty good that looks really good good job bud. looks now, do you do you keep the do you have the polarises and the ski dudes in the same room or do you have a separate separate are they segregated areas uh, like like how do you display them together um no they're they're all kind of in the same this is kind of a our dealership is um, it's chopped up quite a bit because this was a house back in the day and we just kind of, you, know, you keep adding on. Right. And um, so anyways, everything is in under the, in the same area. Um, and it, it, it's good because people could then go from one right to the other, so, you know, yep. almost like side by side. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That looks really good though. Nice. Well, is that the last picture? It must be. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Well, that was cool. Here, let me just yep. uh, put myself back to somewhat normalcy here. Great pictures, man. It's yeah, awesome. Those are, those are awesome. Yeah, thank things. you. I, I'll know for next time to make sure I put them in order, you know? <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing. You're going you're gonna to make my work as easy as possible, yeah. right? So. No, I, and that's what I've gotten out of this whole, this whole thing tonight 
as long as I can make your life easy, I'll send directions on how to make that bag stay on the back of your sled. You know? That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good, man. No, it's good, Kevin. That was great. You're a great guest to have on. And I know everyone appreciates uh, all the things that you've done with the snow check. I know I watched every time I seen you going on for even, even for the skidoo one, I was interested, man. Like, you know, and all my buddies would send me links. Hey, this guy's on again. And we're finding out. So really good uh, that you did all that. I know, if, like I said, and you even mentioned everybody in Canada and, and the U S was, was listening to you. So it was awesome of you to do that. So. No, I, in, in honestly, guys, I, you know, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and I never thought that, uh, you know, making a video would ever turn into to what it has. And, and for you guys to recognize that and reach out, I, I really, really appreciate that opportunity to be able to talk to, to your fans as well. Um, you know, no, something thank you. Forget. everybody was excited about it. How, how do people find you? Like, like give a shout yeah. out to your social media handles, your YouTube channel, and uh, and how do they find you on Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff? Yeah, so on Facebook, just uh, Robertson's Power and Sports. And then same thing with YouTube, just search Robertson's Power and Sports. Um, you know, we try to do videos of builds, walk-arounds, uh, tips and tricks. Um, you know, maybe I'll do one now on how to attach that seat bag. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe get some good news on that. But yeah, for sure. Know, it, They'll it, say, "What a dumb, what a dumb idea! Who doesn't know how to do this?" That's, that's, right, that's what right. You get. What idiot doesn't know how to do this? Right. You know? But uh, you know, I'm going to tell you that when you watch our YouTube videos, and even if it's um, we talk about Tech Fest, like I referenced earlier, um, I just try to give you the best information that I can. It's not always just trying to sell you something. It's more of like, "Hey, have you ever thought of why you may need a GPS?" And not because you know the trails, but what about when you're crossing a lake and you're in a whiteout condition um, that could help you get across just different scenarios. We talked about uh, fuel, uh, the, the fuel caddies there, uh, the link caddies. And I ran into a situation earlier this year where I got up to a place that they ran out of fuel. They had no fuel. So um, just to try to give real life situations and to make you think maybe outside the box, you know? Um, so that's what our channel is all about. Like I said, and we just started doing some riding um some riding videos us out there enjoying the stuff too so um right that's the easiest way to get it at me like i said facebook just robertson's power and sports and then also on, on our youtube channel as well right i'll post some links after I'll, I'll post yep. some links after the show in the uh in the comments below um jimmy g says that was very cool he put the awesome emoji up you posted updates on snow checks uncle buck says great show guys mike Goulis says good night guys great show um, Fieldsy Nine thinks you should do a video considering all the lost bags and the forks this season, you know. So, and Ryan's going to finish millionaire his millionaire club and then go to bed. <laughs> See you next week. Cheers. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was a great that was a great show. Thank you for your time and yeah, and jumping awesome. on with us tonight. That was that was great. So it was no, absolutely, guys. I, I really appreciate it. I hope. Uh, I lived up to the expectations other than the photos not being in order, but I'll work on that. <laughs> yeah, that for sure. Great, no, it's, it's yeah. all good. All good in the hood. We really appreciate you having, and anybody watching this on the replay, there's two more videos. I think you'll like to watch. Uh, click on those, click uh, subscribe to my channel. Click, click that like button too. If you like the video, if you didn't like the video, click that dislike twice and, uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> but um yeah i'll just roll the credits here if you want to hang around there for a second there kevin uh, thank you again really appreciate yeah, the insight yeah, you, thanks, you kevin. provided thank yeah, you and, it. and i hope all your fans uh, your fans enjoyed it all right oh on. i think thanks, they bud. did i think yeah. they did fun show tonight really appreciate the videos that were put out on snow check snowstorm says so yeah You're uncle welcome. buck wants to know if there's a muff pot recipe for the millionaire club that's a oh, good God. video you should put out. Yeah. So, yeah. Right on. Anyway, we're, we're going to end this right now before it goes too far off the rails. Part of the pun. <laughs> <laughs>